Cornhuskers looking to flex their muscles against Utah State. The Huskers and Aggies coming up next. It's a sea of red in Lincoln. The Husker faithful have packed Memorial Stadium once again. Oh, sure, last year was a bit of a disappointment. But hey, look, the coach is smiling again. That's the best part of college football. Every year is a new year. And the Huskers have a jamming QB. Perhaps the Lord of the Championship rings? The exciting Jamal Lord leading the big red attack. Go, Go, Will this be the return of the feared black shirt defense? Can the Huskers run the ball down the throat of Utah State? It's a season of mystery and suspense. The new Nebraska against the Utah State Aggies. Big 12 Bedlam starts now on Fox Sports Net. campus of the University of Nebraska in Lincoln. Kia Sarah presents College Football Saturday as today. The 23rd ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers play host to the Utah State Aggies. Hi everybody, I'm Joel Myers alongside Dave Lapman. Welcome once again to Lincoln. Well, offensively, plenty of question marks coming in for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. On the defensive side of the ball, though, the black shirts last week against Oklahoma State looked like they were in midseason form. Well, they've really responded, Joel, to a change in philosophy. Bo Pelini came from the Green Bay Packers and is now the defensive coordinator, and it is an attacking scheme. They are punching the offense and making the offense counterpunch them, whereas last season it was a stay at the line of scrimmage, read and react. They're so athletic, they're so fast, Bo Pelini is usual, utilizing all of it. Tight end position of strengths for both squads, a Mackey Award candidate. Under the microscope today, Chris Cooley. Well, they run a lot of formations, Utah State, and I'll tell you, you see Cooley in a lot of different uh, places, Joel. He'll line up at tight end, he'll line up at fullback. He'll be the only back in a one-back set. 6'2", over 250, 6'4", over 250 pounds, runs 4'6". They want to get Perfect the ball in his hands as much as they can. He is going to be the key to this squad in so many different sets and formations, like you said, offensively for the Aggies. Can they hold up, pull off the upset? We'll find out over the next three hours. First, though, Mike Goldberg in the studio. Joel Myers, Dave Lapham, thank you. Welcome back inside our College Football Saturday studios along with the Hall of Famers, Kellen Winslow, Billy Ray Smith, Mike Goldberg. Let's get you right caught up. Let's go to... Welcome back to College Football Saturday brought to you by Keo Serra. This is the walk in Lincoln, Nebraska. Since 97, Huskers 24-2 in August and September. Third best mark in the nation. Will they mark up Utah State today? Billy Ray, what should we expect to see in this game? A lot of passing from Utah State, a lot of running from that Nebraska offense. The Nebraska offense, they still got to get their stuff together. They only had one touchdown last week. They do. This will be one of those 200, 100 yard days for Jamal Lord. Mm -hmm. 200 yards passing, 100 yards rushing on the, on the ground to get this offense going. All right, don't forget, we'll see you at the half on the Nissan Halftime Report Top 25 Big 12 scores and highlights. Take a look at number 10, Chris Stallworth. He and the A set to go against Nebraska. The kickoff is coming up next. See you at halftime, everybody. Welcome back once again to one of the great sites for college football. Pretty tough to beat. Lincoln, Nebraska. Joel Myers, Dave Lappin, Jim Knoxon. A perfect day, 80 degrees, and the eighth time these two teams are getting together. None have been close. Nebraska winning last year easily and turned it off in the second half. As Nebraska, you think they feel good about their defense. Sandro DeAngelis is going to kick it away. Nebraska won the toss, but they want their black shirts on the field first, Dave. They do. They want the black shirts to set the tempo of this football game, just like they did last week against Oklahoma State with that stifling defensive effort. Jerome Dennis back deep, along with David Fiafia. And Fiafia is their all-purpose guy. He does everything. Punt returns. They're leading tailback. So we are ready to go from Lincoln, Nebraska. We could not ask for better weather. And as Jim Knox mentioned, 257th consecutive setup. Wow. DeAngelis, I think it may be that way all day for Nebraska downwind, regardless of what end they're working from. Travis Cox is his coach, McDenna, he told us he was all excited about coming to play and start in this stadium. 
He's a coach whose son, his father, a longtime high school coach, a very successful one. And Travis Cox, big kid, thick kid on the bottom half of his body. He's a tough kid and threw for 280 yards in his debut as a starter. So we shouldn't see a guy with happy feet back there. No, we shouldn't, Joel. And he had 19 completions in that opener to nine different wide receivers. So he distributed the ball to all quadrants of the field. Right away, they work out of the shotgun. Moving the pocket by design and going back the other way. Great call to start the contest. And the tight end for Utah State. Losing the football is a control, though. Jason Stevens on the completion. So deception to start the game right away for Travis Cox. And he's got a big offensive line. Now can they hold up? But against the black shirts, Penn, Vandermaid, Galliano, Hutton, an Outland Trophy candidate, and Tupea is the right tackle. Fia Fia and Cooley you'll see in the backfield. Cooley a tight end, setting up at fullback. Stallworth, their best wide receiver. Tony with experience, and Patrick McNutt, the other tight end. Look at all the motion and movement, trying to confuse Nebraska defensively, their assignments and their keys. Nothing conventional. And a play fake right away to Fia Fia. The dump off. And the other tight end getting involved. Make nut this time or make it coolly out of the backfield. And good yardage. Close to another tight end. Defensively, how challenging is it going to be for Thomas, Bingham, Adams, and Johnson? They're going to be spinning their wheels today. That's obviously at the outset. Hollowell, Rude, and Demario Williams, number seven, showed up on the film big time from last week. Washington and Rickett to the corners. Bullock's a couple of interceptions last week in Bland are the experienced safeties. So now second and short. All of a sudden, a couple of plays, 20 yards for Utah State. They'll spread that defense. Movement, shifting, movement again. I mean, they're just, they're trying to get Nebraska back in their heels. Cox, he had a cushion on the outside. He's got his wide receiver, Raymond Hicks, for a first down. So good audible and a checkoff at the line by Travis Cox. Yeah, moving the chains. Two first downs already. The very first play of the game, TJ, TJ Hollowell, the linebacker, had a shot to make a play in the open field and stop that throwback screen, and he missed the tackle. As a result of that, Utah State got positive yards in that first play of the game, and you can see some confidence being generated. Once again, all the movement and shifting, trying to confuse Nebraska. Three straight completions for Cox. Now for the 44. Pocket holds up well. Whole field to look at, and Cooley's got a first down and won't go down. All the way to the 37 of the Cornhuskers. So not exactly intimidated coming out. Well, it's going to start up front for this Utah State offensive line. They have to give Cox protection. Look at they got two tight ends. Watch the pocket that's formed. They keep the tight ends in to help to, in protection a little bit. And then wide open down the football field, Cooley finds a little seam in the zone in front of the linebackers. Barrett Root tries to rip it out of there, but unsuccessfully. Cooley, good tight grip on the football. Multiple shifts as they hit the slot man wide open. Kenny Coleman knocked out of bounds with another first down, and that was almost a motion call. It didn't look like they were set before the snap. I think it's coming back. I agree. And uh, once again, a penalty self-destruction. Illegal shift by the Aggies is going to be costly. Last week against Utah, they had a 100-yard interception return for a touchdown, nullified by penalty. Two guys shifting at the same time is illegal, and one of them has to be set for a full second. Man in the backfield never got set, Dave. And it's, it nullifies a big play. I mean, that's not just that's just not a five-yard play. But two guys, both these guys moving at the same time. One of them has to get set for a full second. As a result, wide open, a confusion in coverage by Nebraska, negated by a self-destruction by the Aggies with the penalty. What a read by Cox, though. Uncovered his slot, man, and he got it as quickly as you can get it out there. So now it's going to be first and 15. Delay, Fia Fia's got room. Takes it inside the 35, breaks a tackle to the 30. Nine carries, 54 yards. Tough little back at 5'8", 200 pounds. Yeah, he doesn't have breakaway speed, Joel, but he's got really good hands. He's got tremendous vision. And that time, he took it north and south in a hurry. And I, I tell you, I think, I think Utah State has accomplished what they wanted to do. A little bit tentative, the black shirts. I mean, they're not flying around the football field like they did against Oklahoma State. Barrett Rude misses a tackle. Picks up an extra five yards before it's finalized by Fabian Washington. So 11 yards on the first carry of the day for Fia Fia. 
as they send Coleman in motion. Cox in trouble coming back the other way. And what an open field tackle on Fia Fia. Coming up out of the secondary, it was... T.J. Hollowell. Yes, Hollowell out of the secondary, the safety. Hollowell missed a tackle on the first throwback screen, the first play of the game. You're not going to fool him twice. Misdirection. All the flow of the play goes to the left. Throwback screen to the right. If he catches the football, there's Hollowell. Hollowell says, I'm not going to, it's not going to happen again. I'm not going to miss two tackles on the same play. So now third. A little more than four, almost five for Cox on a drive that started at his own 20. And again, he, got he is checking right it off. Tackle. But his right tackle just lifted up. Yeah. No flag yet. No, he was never in a, he never right. set himself. He was never got in a three-point stance. He stayed in a two-point. They're going to call timeout. It's a good call by Travis Cox, a real composed quarterback, because five yards are out of field goal range. Yeah, you don't want to take a penalty here, absolutely. So what an impressive start for Utah State on national TV for the first time since 97, only their second national appearance since 81. College Football Saturday on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Kia Serra, the new value frontier. By Dr. Pepper, BU, nothing's better, it's Dr. Pepper. By Nissan and your local Nissan dealer. And by T-Mobile, get more from life. Big third down coming up for Utah State and Travis Cox looking underneath. Grab is made, but it looks like Raymond Hicks, yes, is going to be short of the first down by a little less than two yards inside the 29. Fabian Washington with a nice, sure tackle there. Now the decision for Utah State, go for it. There's, in my mind, not much of a decision. This would be a very long field goal attempt. Fourth down and short yardage. You might as well go. You're certainly not going to punt. You have nothing to lose here. And it's into the win. So it's a 45-46 yard attempt into the win. More than 50 for Mick Dennehy. And they will go for it. Now watch this as they empty the backfield. Cox has not missed. He's 5 of 5 so far. Quarterback sneak right in here. Looking for the screen over the middle. Oh. And it's dropped by Cooley. Wow. It was available for the first down, but Cooley couldn't hang on. Boy, I'll tell you, I, I'm not sure. I guess it was a long yard, but the way they had the defense lined up in, in empty backfield, I thought it could have been a very easy, very easy quarterback sneak. Watch Cooley. They're going to run the, the tight end screen to the middle of the football field. He just pivots, tries to pick up his offensive lineman. Boy, a little kick out block, and he might have had big, big yards down the middle of the football field. First opportunity for Utah State is not executed well enough. Their go to guy, Cooley, dropped the pig. Jamal Lord, that quarterback once again for the Huskers, the senior from Bayonne, New Jersey. Josh Davis takes off. He had 95 yards last week. And pulled down to the secondary after a healthy gain of seven. Jerome Dennis on the hit. Well, is there going to be balance? Last year, Jamal Lord only completed 47% of his passes. Got to be better this year. Didn't hit passes for even 100 yards last week. Incognito, Erickson, that's the experience. Sewell, Anderson, Bill Waldrop on the offensive line. Davis and Davies in the backfield. Pilkington had to be a fan of the Beatles with those banks. LaFleur and Harrion. Very good tight end in Matt Herring, a great average last year. And when we watched him yesterday, Dave, you said he was almost like a tweener between a wide receiver and a tight end. He's like a big wide receiver. Watch this right here. Some action coming up. You called it. Get they get the seal on the left side. Giving to the outside. Davis, the senior from Loveland, Colorado, has the first down to the 40. So two snaps. Davis has 11 defensively for the Aggies. And they are going with the 3-4. Jackson, Tapea, and Gates. The linebackers are going to have the work cut out for him. Putnam, Watts, Wilson, and Frederick. And in the secondary on the corners, Dennis and Clark with Rosecrans and Shank. The experience from Shank at the safety position. Davis again looking inside. Nothing available. Chopped down behind the line of scrimmage. Penetration there. Back at the 39, Putnam blew up that play. The strong side backer, a junior from Brigham City, Utah. Like a 10 Hendricks type of guy, 6'7", almost 240 pounds, long arms, plays with tremendous leverage. He's going to be a factor in the passing game. When he drops back in the zones, it's like a sequoia tree out there. When he rushes, when he rushes the pass and gets those hands up, he presents a problem. Passing situation, second and long, almost a dozen. Lord, the three-step drop, complete. Going to LaFleur, who moved up in the depth charts, and now they say he did not hang on to the football. Yes, he did. 
Yeah. It's up to the 43, near the 44-yard line on the short game. Pulled down by Estelle. Very short tackle by Estelle. He stopped the journey immediately. And Barney Cotton, the new offensive coordinator for Nebraska, wanted to get Jamal Lord's feet in, in, on the ground in terms of getting into the passing attack and through that short pass to complete his first ball and get his confidence going. Third and a little over six yards needed for Lord. Three wide receivers set. And available over the middle. Easy first down to Harrion. Yeah, the linebacker just settled in between the coverage. First down, Nebraska. Dr. Pepper game break. Let's head back to Mike Goldberg in the studio. State Aztecs looking to take a 14-3 lead on Ohio State, but no. Matt Dugalecki in Allen, and he will take it. And I mean he will take it. 100 yards for the score. Ohio State leads by a field goal, Joel. All right, Mike, expect anything, though, out of San Diego State. Now Davis weaving his way into the secondary. He's got a first down. He's not a big guy, but boy, ran with great vision there at 5'11". Now Derek Shank got to him in the secondary. Well, this is the old power game. And watch the fullback and watch the pulling lineman. Does a good job. Erickson gets around, fullback, makes the block. That's the power running game between the tackles for that Davis takes advantage of. Nothing fancy, fullback and guard, shoulder to shoulder through the hole, creasing the defense. From the Nebraska 29, Huskers have it at the 28. Now Lord calling his own number. He's up, guys. He's and up. he's taken down. Justin Jackson, the senior from Kent, Washington. There's a new offensive coordinator for the Corn Huskers, former Nebraska. All-American offensive lineman himself, Barney Cotton, was a draft choice of the Cincinnati Bengals, a teammate of mine for a while before he played, finished his career with the St. Louis Cardinals. And I'll tell you what, he, he's, he's got a pretty good scheme. It's going to take a while to, ins to install it, but he wants to balance it up, throw that ball as well as run it. Lord, again, he wants it himself. He's got it inside the 20, but he's short of the first down by about a yard. Popped by Shank again. Well, six new assistants. You talked about Barney Cotton, the offensive coordinator. Bo Pelini is the defensive coordinator. Alvin running backs, passing game coordinator. Scott Downing, tight ends, recruiting coordinator. Sanders with the D-backs and the linebackers with Jimmy Williams. So a brand new look for Frank Solich. Well, and you have an NFL influence. Bo Pelini comes from Green Bay. Jimmy Williams played in the NFL with the Detroit Lions for 12 years at linebacker. Uh, it, it's really going to influence instant credibility with the kids. Davis doesn't get to the marker. He's short of the first down by about a yard. Well, yesterday we caught up with Frank Solich, talked about the transition in the new staff and especially to the coordinators. The high energy staff, they coach fast. They coach fast in meetings, they coach fast on the football field, and I think um, that kind of energy has been picked up by our players. A little carryover from the staff onto the field. But now Nebraska finds itself in the red zone. Joel, they had red zone problems last week. Finishing drives fourth and short. Lord calling his own number. He's got it. He got help from behind. It looked like Judd Davies gave him a shove, the fullback. Absolutely, Joel. He did. He, he hammered it up in there and gave him that little extra oomph. A difference in philosophy. Fourth and short for Utah State. They spread the field and try a middle screen. Fourth and short from Nebraska, they say, we're going to muscle you and knock you around and reestablish the line of scrimmage backwards. And Jamal Lord, 6'2", 225 pounds. That's a linebacker type. That's a powerful guy. Good legs. Inside of seven minutes left of the quarter, Lord stretching to the boundary. Didn't want to pitch it. Putnam was waiting for him. Big time tackle. Putnam missed all of last season with a shoulder injury. He was first team all Big West, though, as a freshman back in 2000. Held his ground there. He's a talented guy, you know, and, and, and look, he's six foot seven and his wingspan seven foot six. I mean, he's got those long arms. He, he doesn't have to bend over to tie his shoes. So he plays with leverage, you know, and it's hard to get into his body. He's like the mad stork, Ted Hendricks, out there on the edge a little bit. Just like you. Yeah, exactly. Long and lean. Second and nine <laughs> for Lord of the Huskers. It's scoreless so far. Again, the option. Jamal Lord trying to break through. That time, though. Michael Gates got him the backside and the sophomore out of Arlington, Texas. Nebraska, if they can get their passing game in order, they will be a difficult challenge because they have the power running attack between the tackles. 
they can run the option to stretch the field horizontally. Then if they can get the ball down the football field, you have to defend the whole field. And that's what they're trying to get accomplished. That's what Frank Solich has in mind. Now what Nebraska needs, third and long. Lord breaking the tackle, first down and more. Touchdown, Nebraska. Well, there's no question about that man's running abilities, Joel Putnam. The big six foot seven inch linebacker had an open shot at him in the in the open field, missed him. Jamal Lloyd jukes inside of him, lowers the shoulder pads, takes it to the house. And that's what Jamal Lord is capable of doing. The number one returning quarterback in terms of rush yards in the country. And that effort last year was third best in NCAA or 1A history. So this guy can run it. The penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Jamal Lord a little bit effusive in his celebration. That's a no-no. The new rule this year, they can be taken on the extra point or on the open on the following kickoff. And Utah State decides to take it on the kickoff. DeAngelis for the point after. And he pushed it. Yep, he missed. missed two field goals last week. And we might see David Dykes this afternoon. In fact, I think Dykes is the one tonight favorite to make his appearance this afternoon. Nebraska six. You got to be a little bit lower on that stat. Like Nebraska with a six to nothing lead on a 15-yard touchdown run by that young man Jamal Lord. Now David Dykes is going to kick it away, but don't forget later. College Football Saturday presented by Kia Sierra continues on Fox Sports Net. We'll head to the Pacific Northwest in a good matchup. Washington trying to bounce back from an opening day setback at Ohio State, matching up with Indiana. The Hoosiers had their problems last week on the road. That's the second half of our doubleheader today. Little Big Ten, Pac-10 matchup, and boy, Nebraska not only misses the extra point, they're penalized on the kickoff for the celebration by Jamal Lord after he scored the touchdown. They are kicking off from their own 20 yard line. Should be good position, field position for Utah State. So a true freshman from Spring, Texas, who is close to overtaking Sandro DeAngelis for placements, he is going to kick it away. Will it find the sideline? No. It'll be brought back by Jerome Dennis. Dennis making a mess. Nifty move to the 30. Slowed down right at the 33-34 by Fabian Washington. Well, Lord picked up the first down because of a busted tackle and found the end zone. Watch Put Putnam right there. He's going to miss. I mean, he's got the, the contain. He played the outside leverage like he should have. Lord just made him miss. He just juked him right out of his uh, out of his cleats. He's on scoring drive. 13 plays, covering 71 yards, almost six minutes off the clock. After Utah State, David had it for four minutes and failed to capitalize. Little ball control there, Joel. You know, eat that clock up. So wasted opportunity for Utah State. Now can they get it done? It's a shift via Fia out of the backfield. It's empty. Cox on the short drop, settling in his cooling. The man who dropped the automatic first down takes it for first down to the completion across the 45. Jim Knox. Okay, thank you, Joe. Barney Cotton, offensive court in Nebraska, just holding court here on the Nebraska sidelines. He said, good job. You got to pick up the tempo. Also changing little blocking schemes on that offensive line. One thing, Jamal Lord right over here, guys, got plenty of congratulations when he came to the bench after scoring the touchdown. But Frank Solich got in his face and said, no more celebrating in the end zone like that after a touchdown. That cost him. It did. It cost him field position, Knox, exactly. And now Cox audibleizing, checking off at the line. Cooley trying to hear him on the right side. So he looks back, and he's got a cushion on the outside again. Stallworth with his first grab of the day. Their talented wide receiver, a senior from Sacramento. Big, big, big target, Joel. 6'3", 214 pounds. Last week against Utah, five catches, 113 yards, and a touchdown. Look at the cushion. Big respect there. Tremendous cushion. Now he closes the cushion. Little stop, come back to the football. Excellent, excellent route run. Not too bad coverage, really, but after the catch, he's affected because of that size. Big body out there. Travis Cox starting the day, eight for nine for 65 yards. Eight on the last completion to Stallworth. And looking for the first down, plenty of time. Cooley taking on the linebacker over the middle, trying to shed Barrett Rude, who slowed him down. 
But a first down again at Utah State. Let's face it, Aggie fans back home in Logan must be feeling like we've seen this last week four times inside the 35 of the first half against Utah. And on those four possessions, Dave, only three points. Exactly. They have to finish their drives a little better. Cooley already has four catches. The one that is, is in his mind, though, was the drop middle screen on fourth and one. That could have led to points for Utah State. Uh, Travis Cox completed his first six straight to four different receivers. Cox. Well, we got him. protection. Wide open. What a grab by Cooley. Touchdown, Utah State. A contortionist on that catch. Philip Bland was in the area, Joel. Philip Bland didn't make a good play on the football. Cooley catches the ball. It's thrown behind him a little bit. He shows a good ability to adjust to the football. This guy's 6'4", 252 pounds. And here he comes off the line of scrimmage. He's just running right down the hash mark, stretching the field. Great adjustment to the ball. Bland runs by it. Doesn't take a proper angle on the football. Nobody there to touch Cooley. He scores in touch football. Nobody lays a fingernail on him. What a strange beginning. Hamlin for the point after. It's good. And Utah State has the lead over Nebraska. What a beginning, though, for Travis Cox and his partner. Chris Cooley with five catches. A touchdown to the last grab. Welcome back once again to Lincoln. One scouting service had tight end Chris Cooley ranked among the top 20 tight ends in the nation. Well, from what I've seen already, put him on the top 10 right now. I'll tell you, he's got five catches already, Joel, for 85 yards. That 41-yard touchdown catch, the third longest reception of his career. He is legitimately big time. Josh Davis on the short kick. Gets it up near the nine. Big lane on the left side. Room to run. He'll be chopped down, crossing the 35. A great field position on a short kick. Nebraska is going to have it at their own 38. Watch Cooley come off the line of scrimmage. He's just going to run right down the hash mark. Wide open in the middle of the field because of by formation, Utah State has Nebraska so spread out. Nobody paying attention to the tight end. There's Bland taking a bad angle. Runs by the football. Cooley keeps his balance. Tremendous flex flexibility to turn back to catch that football. So big, so flexible, so fast, so good. And I quote you, 68 seconds on the drive. <laughs> Lord again, short side of the field, Davis nowhere to go. Putnam's over there. Backside pursuit got there as well. Justin Jackson, the senior from Kent, Washington. Let's and take, good pursuit. Let's take a look. Look at, look at how spread out Nebraska is because of the formation. Remember, all the motion, everything else that Utah State is doing. Nebraska's on their heels a little bit. Look at this hole. Here comes Bland taking the bad angle. Oop, no go. Cooley says, I'm keeping my balance. I'm taking it to pay dirt. And how bad, how big is kicking game? Missed extra point, difference right now. So Nebraska fans seen red early. Lord, and there's a hole right in front of us. The completion is short one to the fullback, Davies. He'll get back to the original line of scrimmage. Let's head downstairs. Jim Knox. Hey, Joe, I'll tell you what, one of the most animated coaches, Chris Tabor, receiver coach, got his offensive unit along with Travis Cox on the bench. He said, that series is over. I promise you guys, this will be a back and forth game. Really getting his unit pumped up. This should be a wild one this afternoon. I'll tell you what, Knox, see Travis Cox, 10 of 11. 10 of 11, the only incompletion was a drop ball on the middle screen by Cooley, but he'd make up for it or what? Lord now. On third and 13, again, another dump off. Davis will not get there. Son of Tony Davis, 19th on the Huskers all-time rushing list with over 2,000 yards. Marvin Clark got there in time. Another former teammate of mine, uh, Joel, tough Tony Davis. Josh's dad, Tom Rude, Barrett Rude's dad. I feel like it's a Bengal reunion out here in, in Husker land. And, and Josh plays just like his dad. It, it almost looks like they're twin brothers. I mean, it is a flashback. Josh looks so much like his dad, Tony. Plays like them too. Can you have that many Bengals and still be successful? I'm it's like the you. early 60s Mets. If you had too many on your team. See though, Joel, in the 70s and 80s, we were in the Super Bowl a couple of times. So you know, had some good teams back then. Kyle Larson, you're right. You're absolutely right with Kenny Anderson as your quarterback. My roommate. Let him go. And then Boomer. Yep. Behind him, David Fia Fia from the 18. And a good play downfield for the Huskers. Great special teams work by Chad Seavers, the middle linebacker. So now it'll be at the 20-yard line for Utah State. 
College football Saturday presented by Kia Sierra and a great one next week for us. Iowa, Iowa State to start it all off will be in Ames, Dave. And then the USC Trojans coming off maybe the most impressive win of the opening weekend last week. They've got a tough one today at home against BYU, but next week we'll have them on Fox Sports Net. Second half of our doubleheader against the Rainbows. Iowa, Iowa State, big, big rivalry there. Looking forward to that one. Iowa State's won five in a row. Seneca Wallace led the big, big comeback last year. Cox audible eyes, too tall for his wide receiver, trying to get it to junior Raymond Hicks out of Kansas City, Kansas. Yeah, that's the worst ball that Travis Cox has thrown today. He has been on target. 10 of 11, the first two drives, now 10 of 12 on the afternoon. And we talked about him knowing his offense, knowing how the defense is trying to take away his offensive scheme and distributing the football all over the field. What numbers to start off with? And what about Utah State? 122 yards of total offense. Good low grab. Coming up with the football for the Aggies, Jason Stevens, another one of their talented tight ends. He went low to get it. He's got it short of the first down by a yard. But well, when you throw the ball about every snap in practice, you get good throwing it and catching it. Look at this catch. Fingertip. Catch the back half of the football. Now get your shoulder pad squared upfield. Pretty nice. I mean, you, you pick that up on first down. That makes it easier as a play caller. Your whole playbook wide open to you. So now third the yard. Empty backfield for Travis Cox. Quick count. He's got the first down. That's what you were looking for earlier down to the 29 of Nebraska. I was, and I'm glad they did it this particular time because they have Nebraska spread out. I mean, on that middle screen, they went empty backfield, and, and the, there was nobody in the box between the tackle box. That quarterback sneak, I think, is available. Yeah, you, got, you want to keep everybody happy. You spread the ball around like this. Travis Cox is getting everybody involved early. Yeah, nine different guys with a catch last week. He's already got five. This is only the third series of today's action. He can distribute the ball to all quadrants of the football field. Long, short, and intermediate. Yeah, the Utah State wants to talk it over. They have used their second time out of the first half. It comes with 66 seconds left and a surprising start to the half. Be bad for college football. I know, Dave, you and I talked about this earlier today. How many players are really, really physically mature? Hey, Maurice Claret could not get through the Big Ten season last year physically. Right. He missed games. You can't play as an 18-year-old in this league, in the NFL. Quick one. And blocking ahead. What a call by Utah State. Going to their wide receiver, Kenny Coleman. There's an offside, a flag on Nebraska, I believe. I think you're right. One of the D linemen lurched up into the neutral zone, so the play is going to stand. Forget the penalty, take the yards because they picked up about 12. Defense offside, decline the penalty, yardage is good for a first down. John Bible, long time veteran of the Big 12, our referee today. Been here, comes up early. You got to listen, watch the football. Come on, come on now. The ball's right under your chin. Don't move till the football moves. Do not listen to the quarterback. He's played enough snaps to know. Tune out the quarterback, move when the football moves. Once again, Utah State moving the football. They've got it first and 10, close to their own 44. Good protection for Cox. Went to the underneath, Fia Fia, and maybe rushed it a little bit that time. And Cabongo said, hey, I was off sides. I'm going to make a play, and it was Fia Fia full fumble. we we'll take him down to the ground. And Dave, go figure from week to week trying to figure out this game. Last week, in 60 minutes of work, one of the more talented groups, Fields, Rashawn Woods of Oklahoma State, got 183 yards the whole day. 145 yards of total offense on 16 snaps for Utah State. They're being very, very efficient throwing the football, and they're neutralizing Nebraska's speed by scheme. They're using their speed against them by formation and window dressing motion. So very quiet, 257th consecutive sellout in Lincoln. In fact, they're shocked so far the way Utah State has been moving the ball early. That's the end of the first quarter. Utah State with a one-point lead over Nebraska. You're watching College Football Saturday on Fox Sports Net, presented by Kia. Start of the second quarter, Utah State with a football and a one-point lead. Joel Myers, Dave Lappin, and Jim Knox is going to be talking to that former judge who's celebrating his 100th birthday. Hard to get 100 candles in that little cupcake. Man, you got to get a bigger cake. I mean, one candle. 100 years old, you deserve 100 candles. Get that big cake out there. I think you're looking for a slice of that pie. Uh, absolutely now. Fia Fia, he's got room into the secondary. And close to a first down across the midfield stripe. Our WebMD first quarter numbers. 
Utah State moving the ball consistently through the air. And they almost double up Nebraska in total yards. Look at that number. Over 100, 105 yards better throwing the football. No turnovers. It's been pl well played, not a whole lot of penalties. One team is throwing the football. I mean, Utah State's throwing the football like Nebraska wishes they could. Now third and four. The Cox and the Aggies. Even if they can't pick up the first down. Motion. Field position works. Field, field was the one sliding in motion. He looked that way and oh. then threw it up for grabs and almost intercepted off the fingertips of Rude. Then almost picked off finally. Hollowell was there. And also Williams. That's right. Demario Williams was in the vicinity. I thought we'd see Demario Williams a little bit more of a factor in rushing the passer. They've done a pretty good job of, of containing him. Barrett Rude gets the, the mucker up. Williams almost comes up with the deflected football. Nice effort. Nebraska gets the ball. Ben Chade is going to punt for the first time today, the sophomore from Helena, Montana. Ooh. Davis waits back at the five. Missed it. He did. It's going to take an Aggie bounce, and Davis got in the way just enough. Of the Utah State player downfield, good move, because Reggie Wilson could have downed it. Let's head downstairs. Jim Knox. All right, Joel, here he is, the birthday boy. This is the Honorable Judge Harry A. Spencer. 100 years old, he will turn in 10 days. He's been coming to Nebraska football games since 1926. Judge, your most memorable moment in Nebraska history? Uh, Johnny Rogers. Uh country turn against Oklahoma. Oh, that was yeah. back in 1971. There you go. Congratulations for that correct answer, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. That Judge, was... congratulations on turning 100 years old and enjoy the rest of the game. Thank you. Breaking through first carry of the day for David Horn. He backs up Josh Davis. Horn, though, the true home run threat, the sophomore from Omaha. Last year, five-yard average, running for almost 700 yards. He's got that. He's got that nice little, nice little stutter step, and that punt return by Johnny Rogers against Oklahoma in a big, big football game. I mean, Nebraska and Oklahoma were two, two of the best teams, the two best teams in the country. Johnny Rogers steps up huge, wins the Heisman in that return. Run the tight end in motion. Horn again. Slithers his way. Over, guys. Over. Across the 35, near the 36. Well, you talked about Johnny Rogers, Heisman Trophy winner, along with Mike Rozier and Eric Crouch, who's Boy. here today and is going to be able to join us, I understand, a little bit later in the second half. Look at that. He averaged 17 yards a touch between returns and receptions. 7-8 a carry. Are you kidding me? On 2,000 yards, 29 touchdowns. And, and we saw it. We saw Crouch. And just amazing numbers by those Heisman candidates. The toss behind Horn and Utah State comes up with a football. Wow. Alert play down there for the Aggies by Kelly Papinga. The short toss, the pitch, not executed well enough. Lord pitches it behind Horn a little bit, and the ball is on the ground. And Kelly Papinga. He's a true freshman out of Evanston, Wyoming. What a thrill for him. It's on the back shoulder pad of Horn. Got to get the ball out in front of him. It could have been handled, but it wasn't. But the pitch was not, not out in front enough. Not enough of a lead on that pitch. The first giveaway of the game, Nebraska plus three against Oklahoma State. Five takeaways, two giveaways. They're minus one in this one. Look at this formation. Look. Yeah. What about a hook and ladder? <laughs> and now a double throw. Yep. Downfield. Oh. Intercepted. What a read. That's his third on the season. Bullock's a free safety who had two last week, picking off the pass by Matt Crivillo, the backup quarterback. Three interceptions in two games. That's a nice start. And, and you have to admire Utah State. They said, you know what, Mick, Mick Den, he said, we're coming out with our four-man stack. It unfolded, throwback pass. You can throw it down the football field then legally. But tremendous route recognition and break on the football. He's like, I'm he, not going to be fooled. Bullock said, it's my ball. Do you know, he got greedy because underneath, did you notice nobody had Kenny Coleman? Yeah. The he, other option? He unfolded wide open underneath. But I think they were, you know, on sudden change going for the throat. And Nebraska said, not today. Nebraska from their own 11. Get it right back into the hands of Horn. He hangs on. He tried to strip it away, though. The linebacker came up. 
That was Robert Watts. Okay, here's Bullock, and he's watching this thing unfold, and he's saying, I'm going to read the eyes. I'm going to read the eyes. Oh, he's going downfield. I'm breaking on the football. It's mine. It's mine. He targeted. I mean, he basically locked on where he was going to throw the football, and Bullock said, thank you very much. I see where you're going with the ball, Cravello. He was a backup quarterback, Cravello, and he's in that stack formation. Now, Lord, on his own, across the 18. Stand him up at the 19, short of the first, down by two. Terrence Washington, the safety on the hit. Okay, you got four receivers. The fourth one, though, is a backup quarterback. Throw back pass, they unfold. Bullock, Bullock says, uh -uh, not today. I'm reading you. I see you, Cravello. I, I, I know what you're doing. Could have gone here. Yes. Could have gone shorter. But Bullock said, Bullock said, I, I, I'm reading what you're doing. I know you're trying to go for the home run. Coleman was wide open. Cavello, backup quarterback, had his chance to shine. Make it to Horn, get the first down with Lord. Up to he's 25. Up, up, up. So plenty of anxious moments early for the Nebraska Cornhuskers coming in ranked number 23 in the nation. And right now, difficult adjustments for them on the defensive side. So as well as the Black Shirts played last week in stopping Oklahoma State, they are confused by the multiple formations of McDonaghy. They are what, what they've done is they've taken the aggressiveness out of the Black Shirts a little bit, and they're making them think too much. And when you think too much, you just can't react and flow. And they've got them on their heels a little bit because of all the formation changes, the motion, all those things. Lord, finally looking to throw the ball back to Harry, and the tight end falls down. And did he have some room to roam? Only one over there for Utah State was Rodney Wilson, the outside backer. Nice job by Lord to get rid of the football because the, the uh, pressure from Rodney Wilson was in his face. For him to just get rid of it. Watch Lord, he'll go over here and throw back, and here comes the blitzer, and he's untouched. And that's a pretty strong quarterback to be falling away from the line of scrimmage. Harrion has all this room, but the turf monster grabbed his big toe and he went down. So now it's going to be second and long, only a gain of three. Lord is five of five, but all underneath, only 30 yards, and he's pulled down from behind. He'll be short of the first down by a little less than two. Jerem Fano making the stop. So the Aggies hanging tough. And when I talk about Lord, 5 of 5, only 30 yards, he only threw for 78 yards, and it may be Utah State, but when you go on the road to play at Texas this year, at Colorado, at Missouri, Jamal Lord better be able to throw the football or they're going to stack the line. And Joel, when Penn State comes in here next week, yes. I mean, you're going to have to be a little more balanced offensively to, to avenge that 40-7 to defeat. Penn State put on him last year in Pennsylvania. Third, little less than a deuce. Horn on the perimeter. Easy first down. Looking for more, he's got it. Man, he's got it all the way across the 40, near the 42-yard line. David Horn. He's the speed out of the backfield. There, there's the patented stutter step that I was talking about with Horn. You know, he takes he takes the uh, the pitch on the option. Watch the stutter step. Pretty good job. That's not bad pursuit by Utah State, though. The good thing that's happening to Utah State, they're not getting knocked off their feet. When you get knocked on the ground, you get cut in half defensively, and there's cutback lanes. They're doing a good job of staying on their feet and pursuing the football. Horn again. Not much available. Give him a couple. Close to three, up to the 44. The Quillis hit on the head. You know, when you put new systems in, defensive and offensive systems, defense usually catches on quicker because it's more reactionary. Offensively, there's more timing, more coordination, you know, more meshing that has to go on. And I do think that Nebraska's new offensive installation is a little bit behind their defensive installation, which isn't surprising, particularly offensively going against their first 34 defense. Blocking schemes are different. Drive started back at the Nebraska 11. Lord in trouble. And a positive out of what looked like a negative and almost a late hit. No flag is thrown. Close. He was definitely in the white, that five-yard white sideline. And he got chopped over there, but no flag. But this is what Lord can do when there's nothing there. Watch 40 come in and, and make the hit well, well out of bounds. I mean, that, that that's not even close. And they could have gotten Frederick, but they didn't. Frederick Lord's, Lord's about five yards out of bounds, and Frederick takes his pins on. Inexperience of Frederick showing there his first start as an Aggie came last week. He's a sophomore from Salt Lake City. And Frank Solich just let the officials know you missed that one. you got to protect our guy. He's out of bounds. 
Third and five from the 46. Lord all day deflected. Good read underneath by the tackle. I thought Justin Jackson got his hands up, Joel. Yes. 41 in the white jersey got the muckers up and, and, and knocked, knocked the ball airborne. Well, did he use his noggin on that play? It's, it's, it's a way to use your head if that's the case because he just – he gets a uh, boy right in the right in the smush. I mean, right in the face mask. I mean, that that'll stun you. He got the hand up and he didn't need it. It was right off the face mask and airborne. And he's saying, "I'm okay. Give me some smelling salts. I'm ready." Kyle Larson had to it away. He had a shank last week. A guy that's had a sensational career here at Nebraska. We Second him, team All Big 12 last year. We saw him hit that 75-yarder in practice yesterday. Jim. Let him go. Let him go. Nice. Fia, Fia. Calls for the fair catch, and he's got it. Back inside his own 20 at the 16. So the Aggies hanging tough. Don't tell them it's only their second appearance on national. Welcome back to Lincoln, Nebraska. Utah State leading the Huskers 7-6. And number 12 on the sidelines is the new Husker backup quarterback. In fact, he had all the headlines in the Nebraska newspapers today. Frank Solich, Joel and Dave, as you may recall, told us, Joe Daly, the backup quarterback, will get playing time here in the second quarter. A true freshman. I talked to him before the game. He said he's not nervous. I asked him, what do you do better? Pass the football run. He said both. He's a confident freshman. And guys, think back. This is the first true freshman getting significant snaps since Tommy Frazier did back in 1992. And that tells you a little something right there. And Tommy no did make his debut in 92 as a true freshman. Young man, native Floridian. Well, they said Joe Daly's got a good arm. The question is, Joel, with a 7-6 football game down a point, do they stay with that plan and play them this early in the game when they're losing? I thought probably they figured they'd have more control of the football game than they have right now. There may be a change in plans because he's limited with the package that he knows to be able to execute. Well, you know if Joe Daly's in Nebraska, he can run the football. Can he throw it? And that's why I bring up he's got a good arm because they need to keep people honest through the passing game. Cox pump fake. Now is he looking deep? He's going deep. And almost a great grab by Chris Stallworth. Popped it up in the air trying to get it to himself. Into double coverage. Looked like a cover two downfield. Cox got hit, and he's, he got up a little woozy. Cox has staggered a little bit, and, and it's after the throw. You know, a lot of times, quarterbacks, you know, mama, don't let your son to grow up to be a quarterback because after the play, he is just absolutely bulldog to the ground, and he runs into one of the big defensive linemen and just gets stoned. And down the football field, cover two. You have safety, cornerback, coverage, bracket down the football field. But Cox could ding a little bit. Field position wise, a very important snap for the Black Shirts. Blitz is coming on Cox, eludes the pressure, and gets the first down. He's got it across the 26 to Chris Stallworth. That's what just, footwork. Great elusiveness in the pocket, Joel. And you have a double illegal motion, double two men moving at the same time in the Utah State backfield for the second time today. But watch, watch the elusiveness. A jailbreak by Barrett Rude. Nobody picks up the blitzing linebacker, and he just eludes him, sidesteps him, and delivers the football in a timely fashion. But a break for the Cornhuskers. Second time it's been called, as you mentioned, yeah, against the Aggies. You have two the guys. Aggies' confidence has to be building to spike the penalty. Spike the penalties. Yeah, but you have to eliminate the self-destruction. The second time eliminating two big plays, Joel. One of them was about a 30-yard completion down the field. This one eliminates a first down. I mean, you can't self-destruct against Nebraska in Lincoln. You have to clean up those penalties and mistakes. Just about halfway through the second quarter. Aggies cling to a one-point lead. But now instead of first down across the 26, third and 14 at their own 12. Straight four-man rush, look uh -oh. out for Williams, uh -oh. fumble, and Williams calls it in. He's got the hip and the recovery. Man. What a play by Demario Williams. The senior from Beckville, Texas. Well, the first defensive takeaway by Nebraska. You talk about a short field, it can't be any shorter for the offense. Demario Williams, a great speed rusher on the edge, and he was matched up on Donald Penn. And Donald Penn, the left tackle. Mario Williams up the field, low shoulder pads. Penn can't stay with him. Now he, the back can't pick him up. He's closing in. Tomahawk chops the, ball, chops the ball out of there and takes it away. Sack, force fumble, fumble recovery. That's a star right there on the forehead for Demario. That's big time play. He led the Huskers in stops last year. And you talk about a short field, he just gave it to him at the one. 
Judd Davies, he's in. And now, will they give it to him? Yes. Touchdown, Huskers. Opportunistic uh, black shirt defense, Joel. Last week, Barrett Rude recovered a fumble, took it in 15 yards for a touchdown. Williams forces a fumble and puts it on the shadow of the goal line for his offense. Judd Davies just pulled back dive. Nice play by Demario Williams. He, he showed himself big, and Nebraska missed the first extra point, so they're going for two to get back on schedule scoring-wise. So the two-point conversion. And they make it a 14 to 7 lead wide side of the field. Davis won't get there. Good D again. Could come into play that missed extra point by DeAngelis. And has forced the issue for the Huskers. But right now, Williams forcing the situation and giving Nebraska Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Kia Sarah, the new value frontier. By Dr. Pepper BU, nothing's better than Dr. Pepper. And by a Toyota. Get the feeling, Toyota. Welcome back to Lincoln. Mid-80s, humidity about 40%. Great day for college football and one of the great venues you will ever see. The only game in town. That's the big red of Lincoln. And now Fia Fia and Dennis are back deep. Jerome Dennis bringing it back Whoa. to the lane. Look out. Dennis across the 30. All the way to the 40, 42 yard line. Great field position again for Utah State and Travis Cox. But first, a Dr. Pepper game break. Back to the studio. What's the latest, Mike? Uh, Joel, we're going to take you to the big house. Number five, Michigan hosting Houston. Second quarter, David Underwood. Five yard touchdown run. Michigan leads 22 to nothing. But how about a shocker developing in the Atlantic Coast Conference? 14th ranked North Carolina State trails Wake Forest. 28 to 10, can they hold on, Joel? All right, now Nebraska's got the mic. <laughs> Speaking of shock so far, even though Nebraska's got the lead, it's been Utah State that has piled up the yardage offensively. Cox oh, blind Williams. side, Williams again. Oh, man. Back to back sacks. Man, and fumbled it. He well, lost the let's ball. Let's see, if he they lost give it to Nebraska, yeah. they will. That's two forced fumbles on two consecutive plays. Boy, that was a late call, though. It looked like it came out at the very end when Cox hit the ground. I, I think of the, I saw Fisher throwing beanbags. There's a penalty flag. Let's see if Nebraska oh, was offside. If so, what does that neutralize a big play? There's a flag on the far side of the field. When the referees start throwing beanbags, they're spotting a fumble, and two did. After the play had ended, there was unsportsmanlike conduct on the on the receiving team. 15-yard penalty, first down. Nebraska unsportsmanlike conduct is going to cost them 15 yards, but Demario Williams, two straight plays, two straight sacks. Watch the speed rush, the get off. Man, he just beats him out of his stance. Barely laid a finger on him. Now Williams knocks knocks the ball loose. There's the ball out. Cox can't fall on it. It comes off his hip, and Nebraska comes up with the football. Watch the backside hit, blind side, Cox loses the ball, boom. It bounces up to him, he can't control it. It's still on the ground, and Nebraska comes up with it. Boy, what plays back to back by Williams. The covered football, Bernard Thomas, the rush end. And now, out of the gun, Jamal Lord. And what a play in the open field by Marcus Stell, the defensive back on Lord. Jim Knox. Hey, Joel, after Mario came to the bench after that Corn Oscar defense, on. Uh, got the touchdown. Mario came back and he told his teammates, he said, you know what I'm going to do next time? I'm going to fake him outside and go inside, and it paid off. Yeah, he didn't have to go inside, though. <laughs> he just, and when he faked him outside, he continued outside because he went up the football field and just absolutely beat Donald Penn off the ball. Man, it was just a sprint to the quarterback. What and quickness. It's funny, when we talked to the Aggies coaches earlier in the week, they said, watch number seven for Nebraska. Here comes the end around for the Cornhuskers. LaFleur on the outside, inside the 30. The sophomore from Omaha with a first down on a gadget play. He was one of five true flag freshmen to play for the Huskers last year. Watch, watch inside. The guard is going to work his way out on the reverse and get a downfield block. Pretty good hustle. Check this out. Here comes the big fella. Watch him lock up on the defensive back kickout block. That's pretty good effort and movement down the field, sustaining the blocks. Nebraska's got the best blocking wide receivers in college football. And when you block well on the edge, you get big, big runs. 
Nebraska moving the football with six and a half to play in the half. Leading by five. Don't forget what happened to New Mexico State. Another group of Aggies last week. Turnovers killed them. And what a play in the backfield. Spinning through a block. Jake Stewart, the linebacker. Big play on the quarterback, Jamal Lord. Stewart, a sophomore from Logan, Utah. And this is his first season of seeing considerable playing time. And this is what Utah State wanted to do more of, get Nebraska off schedule. Instead of letting them pick up five, six, seven yards on first down, they lose three. Now it's second and 12, second and 13, force of a different color. Loss of three, almost four, back to the 29. Lord, option again, it's available. The big quarterback inside the 20, down to the 18. Needs two more for a first down. And Terrence Washington, a little safety with the hit. Well, there's there's good blocking by Nebraska everywhere. Let's start with the offensive line. Watch him, watch him just seal the perimeter, seal the edge here. Herrian, double team with the tackle. Now seal it all inside. That's strong, that's sweet. And watch down the football field. Another hustling wide receiver making his block. Lalee making a block in the Look at Lalee's block on the edge. Allows Lord to cut up inside. Good block by the Leon Rosencrantz. In Nebraska, pick up the two and a half they need for the first down. Davis will do exactly that. And he's got it all the way to the 11. Wilson caught up with him, but Josh Davis low. Well, he really does stay low. And I'll tell you, this is the old power play by Nebraska. Watch him pull up inside in the fullback. They're shoulder to shoulder. The right guard pulling the fullback. Look at him. Boom. Shoulder to shoulder. Oh, man, does that create a seam. Double teaming inside on that linebacker. Fullback and guard holding hands, sashaying through the hole. That's Nebraska power football. Oh, well, you're living large over here. Aren't you? Uh, I, I love the stuff up front. Sashaying their way through. How about that? <laughs> Lord, corner of the end zone, and just out of the reach of his diving wide receiver, Pilkington. Ross Pilkington, the sophomore from Fort Collins. Now this is the kind of throw that Barney Cotton wants Lord to be able to make, the touch pass. This is called the fade. And the ball is, is airborne. How close is it to being a play? Very, very close. Just over the outstretched fingers. Plenty of air under the ball. Not quite enough accuracy. Not a bad throw by Lord, but that's what you want to be able to complete in that red zone. Now on second and 10 from the 11. Quite a pop, but Davis spins right through it, down to the seven. You know that throw by Lord on the fade, it looked like it was going to be way past Pilkington. It did. He closed well. Yeah, Pilkington, and he, and he extended nicely for the football as well. I mean, you can't you can't fault the effort the wide receiver gave Lord. Pilkington gave it every effort. Barney Cotton right here, the big fella saying, oh, man, those are the plays we have to make to be able to force defenses to defend the whole field. So now from the seven. Almost like a goal situation. They get a first down inside the one. Lord, short side of the field, and turned in by Utah State's cornerback Marcus Dell. He couldn't finish the play, but he slowed him down enough to put him into Michael Gates. And what Barney wants to have happen is more big plays. Last week against Oklahoma State, Joel, 81 snaps. Only two of those plays went for 20 yards or more. 81 snaps, a lot of five, six, four, seven yard plays. Powerful Nebraska football, but he wants to be able to stretch the field with some of those big plays, then it makes it easier to do everything else. Now the true freshman from Spring, Texas, is going to get his first field goal attempt. Dyke. David Dykes. It's going to be a 23-yard try for Dykes, not to Angeles. He makes the extra point. Severe angle. And he put him up by eight. Yes. So Nebraska capitalizing, that's 10 straight points for Nebraska, actually making nine straight points with the field goal and the touchdown. They missed the two-point conversion, and they all come off back-to-back -back turnovers. Nine on Fox Sports Net. You're watching Fox Sports Net. Coming up at half on the Nissan Halftime Report, joined by the Hall of Famers Kellen Winslow and Billy Ray Smith, the shocker developing in the ACC, and an update from the Horseshoe, all at the half on the Nissan Halftime Report. Joel Myers. Thank you, Mike. And Nebraska kicks it an eight-point lead. It is going to be picked up on the far side. Dennis with a nice return again, spinning his way close to the 30. He went to Montclair Prep out in the San Fernando Valley. He's got it to the 29-yard line and across from Montclair Prep. 
my all-time favorite barbecue in Los Angeles, the Tyler Texas Barbecue. Dr. Hoagley Wogley's. Got a feeling he had a lot of lunch periods over there. Now, what a return again for Utah State's Jerome Dennis. So the Aggies, their own worst enemy right now, like last week when they faced Utah in Salt Lake City and lost 40 to 20. They've got some talent offensively. They do, and here's here's some offensive talent up front. Trevor Hutton is wearing number 50 for the rest of the half. They ripped his jersey, 10-inch rip in his jersey, 63. He'll wear it in the second half. This guy, an Outland Trophy candidate, I'll tell you why after this play. Unbelievable physical strength we'll talk about. He's a low. <laughs> you can see that. Now, Pia Pia. And they have not committed the run at all. He took a shot. Coming across the 32 to the 33. Black shirts really haven't dominated the line of scrimmage at all, though, today as Barrett Rouge, you can hear it in the background, made the hit. Yeah, and, and they, they ran right behind Trevor Hutton there, their Outland Trophy candidate. Okay, this guy is a weight room freak. I'm telling you, 525-pound <laughs> bench press, 820-pound squat. That is illegal. Watch your language. I mean, that's that's unrealism right there in terms of overall body strength. And he is looking strong at the line of scrimmage. He's not afraid of anybody. He's a senior from Santa Maria, California. 6'2", 310-pounder. Underneath, bubble screen. Coleman's there. He's got a first down. He's across the 40, out to the 42. I'd still throw to Coleman if I was the backup Crivello on that double pass. Yeah, exactly. And once again, Utah State, they're doing so many things well. Spreading the football field, empty backfield, spreading out Nebraska, quick passes, distributing the ball to different people. They've run this wide receiver alley screen four different ways, you know, different looks for Nebraska every time. And their tempo is so good. They're up to the line of scrimmage quickly. Sometimes they're going no huddle. They've got the black shirts thinking too much. The black, look at them moving around. It's like, how do you sort this all out? And now a little press coverage for Nebraska. So often we've seen zone from the Huskers. Watch him. Watch the Mario off the edge. Well, the left tackle, Donald Penn, remembers that. And now Cox making the most of the opportunity. Pushed out of bounds, but good yardage. Stopping the clock as he's knocked out of bounds at the 48. And, and, and what did they decide to do with the Mario Williams? Well, blocked down, and now the back. Here comes the back, hooking him inside. So they're going to double team him. Good adjustment. I mean, yep, they're, they're going to give Demario Williams all kinds of looks. They're going to have tight ends over there. They're going to slide the line so the line can double team him. They're going to put a tight end over there. They're going to do a lot of three-step drops, get rid of the ball quickly, all because of him. Why? He had two straight plays, quarterback sack, force fumble, nine points. That's why he's been the biggest impact in this football game right there. It has not been the Cornhuskers' offense. It's been their defense that's put them in great shape at the one of Utah State in the midfield stripe for those nine points. And uh -oh. around, look out. It looked like he wanted to throw the yeah. football. Good idea, just throw it away. And that was Barry Tony, the wide receiver. The junior from Newberry Park, California, played his college ball before that at Moore Park Junior College in Southern California. And a guy who's played minor league baseball in the Angels system. So he's been around the block a few times. Another guy around the block and the field, Jim Knox. All right, Joe, I want to remind college football fans, you want us to check out anything around Memorial Stadium here in Lincoln, Nebraska today, just drop us an email, foxsports.com, keyword, ask Knox, and we'll check it out for you, Joe. Well, I can't wait for some of those questions for you, Jim. I'm telling you, Knox, he's got the knowledge, though. Knox the knowledge. Cool, is he a tough customer? Rude still couldn't get him down when he thought he had an angle on him. He's, a He's got a first boy. down to the 45 of Nebraska. Dave, I would not be surprised as they stopped the clock and the movement of the chains of Utah State went into the locker room tied at 15. You know, Cooley impressed me not only physically but mentally, Joel. He drops the ball on a fourth down middle screen. Instead of sulking and pouting about it, he catches a 41-yard touchdown pass. He rebounded from adversity immediately. The guys get good makeup. And now we're going to have a timeout called. And is it going to be Nebraska's call? Yes. They need to make some decisions on the defensive side. Well, they had to call it because they had 12 men on the field. Is that all? And they were sprinting off the field late, and it disrupted the, the uh, timing of the play. And at that point, Bo Pelini says, let's call, let's call timeout and think about it and talk about it. 140 yards passing. Travis Cox, 14 for 18. Fur is down. Now does Cox have time? He's got more than enough time. Deep down oh. the middle, and it's batted away from Coleman. What timing by Philip Bland. The Bland man comes through. Nice job, route recognition by Bland. Watch him break. 
Nice job. Finds the football. Gets his head turned. Found the football as quickly as the receiver did. So he was able to make a play on the ball. Now was the ball a little bit late? Travis Cox for one of the few times today. He's only missed five attempts in 19 tries. 14 of 19. For the second straight rush opportunity, they put a running back on Williams. They Speed want against him. They want to match up with the quickness. Exactly. Look, it's still completing a very high, high percentage. Very efficient quarterback today, Travis Cox. Let's see if he goes to his favorite target. As they show the blitz out of the secondary. And Cox moving by oh. design. He had Cooley wide open. And maybe he rushed it a little bit too much. I think he tried to, like, you know, when you're a fastball pitcher and you aim it, I mean, he was trying to be too perfect. Watch this little action. Little guard now coming out and kicking out. Tackle, I should say. Tight end releases. Tackle kicks out on Williams. Little play action stuff. Wide open. Tried to be too, I don't know, he's like trying to aim it in there. Cut it loose like you have the whole game. So Cooley was available. He's got six for 92. And that touchdown was 41 big yards. So that'll get your average per reception up there when you go 41 down the middle of the field. Utah State has used their final timeout of the half. It comes with a minute 15 remaining. Now, what an entertaining first 30 minutes of play where we thought that Nebraska was going to beat them up in the trenches. Well, Utah State had other ideas, and they have, by design, moved things around. Look at, look, at the, look at the marks on the helmet. That's some red Nebraska paint. He's been blocking people, too, not just catching. I like it. Nissan halftime report, minute 15 away. Mike, Kevin, Billy Ray are going to have all the scores and highlights from the top 25. We'll have an upset in the making. Mike told us about the ACC. NC Strait trying to come back against Wake Forest. Join Mike, Kellen and Billy Ray. That is just a couple of minutes away. Will Phillip Rivers be able to bring the North Carolina State Wolfpack back? Phillip Rivers, excellent quarterback, setting all kinds of records, school records as well as conference records. Heisman Trophy hopeful. He can bring his team back against Wake Forest. It would help his candidacy a lot. If he doesn't, maybe over for him. Uh, Demario Williams creating, creating points for the Cornhuskers. And it's all about quickness and speed. Beating the tackle off the line of scrimmage. Sack, force, fumble, fumble, recovery. Amazing play there. Once again, sack, force, fumble. He doesn't recover it, but a teammate does. That's two dynamic plays by the speed rusher right here, Demario Williams. Let's see. If he gets into the face of Cox once again. Uh-oh. He does it again. Boom. Demario Williams with his third sack of the half. Got to give the tackle some help. Demario Williams is too quick, too fast, too low, too athletic. Man, you, you can't put Demario Williams in one-on-one -on -one pass rush situations. He'll sack you. And once again, oh, man, the speed. And holding hands because of the snap count, the loud crowd hurts him. Doesn't get off the snap count well enough. Off the line of scrimmage, three sacks for Demario Williams. Two of them force fumbles, nine points on those force fumbles. He has been the force. And now Nebraska calls a timeout, so they'll get it back with plenty of time. 62 seconds left and make it decent field position. They, they yeah. had a different tackle in there, Joel. Now tomorrow it all starts with the Rams and the Giants. Doubleheader game one, the NFL returning to Fox. Falcons and Cowboys, second half of the doubleheader, the NFC on Fox. And don't forget, it all starts with J.D. and the guys for the pregame show at 12 o'clock Eastern. So it's finally here. NFL Sunday, number one, the first of 17 in the regular season. We love our Saturdays and our Sundays. Oh, absolutely. They're great as well. And they love Saturdays here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Tremendous venue. Well, Demario Williams is a team captain, and I bring that up because he is the first junior college transfer to be elected a team captain at Nebraska since 1957. That's how much the coaches and his teammates think of him. And this is a punt, and they have him in the game to center, rush the punter. And they have speed there. They, they've used two tackles against him now. They started with Penn. They went to Birmingham. Nobody can block him. Almost a terrible snap, and now a duck hook. Who's on the first tee? Yeah. The punter, Ben Chait. He rushed it. He had more time because he went up top and threw him out of his rhythm. And I'll tell you, I can hook it with the best of them, and I think he beat me on this. Yeah, this is my golf swing right here. Nice <laughs> job to catch the, the snap, but then a, a, not a very good drop. And he said, oh, man, did I, did I mess that up? You know what? It wasn't all me, though. He's going to go talk to his deep snapper and say, come on, give me a shot. He, he was very athletic to go airborne to 
to, to catch the, the bad snap, but then timing disrupted from there. So now Nebraska in great shape. Look like they'd be back inside their own 20. They've got a first and 10 at the 37. And a busted play. Lord looked to give it off to David Horn. Nobody at home. And a sack instead. It was only a 17-yard punt. Sack instead in the backfield for Rodney Wilson. You know, Joel, as we approach the half here, Utah State has to make a decision. And the decision is, do we continue to spread the field and confuse Nebraska? Because we can't pass block Demario Williams. And in order to pass block them, they're going to have to leave a back in the backfield or a tight end. They're going to have to put more bodies over there, outnumber them. But then that eliminates them spreading the field and doing all the confusion. And, and Mick Dennehy is going to have to make some decisions and adjustments at the half. How do we block Demario Williams and still confuse the secondary in Nebraska? I can't believe that Nebraska wasn't going into the hurry up. What kind of confidence does that show in your offense, Dave? Yeah, I, I think I think right now, Barney Cotton, his mentality is, look, I just don't want to screw this up for the defense. You know, don't turn it over. Don't make mistakes. The defense is dominating the football game. Demario Williams is controlling the line of scrimmage. They, they forced t uh, turnovers for us. Let's not mess it up offensively. Yeah. Not exactly a great feeling for your offensive unit. Nebraska back into the top 25 at number three after the win over number 24 last week, Oklahoma State. But what a start to the season for the Big 12. Oh, yeah. Three, three of, the, of the first seven. Right. Five overall in the top 24. That's uh, Look at that. It's pretty good. That's a lot of Big 12 action right there. Five of the top 24 teams. Almost half the conference ranked in the top 25 of the land. That's pretty good strength top to bottom. Uh, is there, and then you've got teams that are coming on like Missouri with Brad Smith and a couple of others. Deck's going to be a real good force this year. And Oklahoma State was in the top 25 doubt. until Nebraska beat them in the opener. So there's a lot of teams. You go to the top 30, you have over half of the conference in the top 30 in the country. Frank Soldich picking up win number 50 last week. They'll take a snap, head to the locker room, and go in, fortunately, with an eight-point lead. But it, it is surprising when a Nebraska team doesn't utilize the final 60 seconds with a timeout on the board. Yeah, and, and right now the offense is struggling, there's no doubt. Down we go, Jim Knox. Okay, Coach, right now the black shirts are playing well, yet the offense struggling a bit. How concerned are you going into half? We're not really playing well on either side of the ball. We forced a couple turnovers, but, uh, but they really went up and down the field uh, in, early in the game and uh, much of the uh, uh, early part of the second quarter. They, we did adjust and slowed them down a little bit, but um, we need to uh, try to get some big plays going here. We're not getting any big plays on the offensive side of it. All right, Coach, best of luck in the second half. Joe? I, I like the candor and the honesty yep. of Frank Soldiers. They're really not playing that well on either side of the ball, especially on the offensive side of the ball. they got to go into the second quarter on the defensive side. Still, Nebraska's on top by eight. Now, the return man is going back deep for the Huskers. So here we go with the start of the second half. And what a half it was for Utah State. Dave, across the board, they held their own almost identical numbers offensively. Right. Hamlin gets into it. How about a fair catch? Inside the 20, taken by the up man for the Huskers. And Chad Sievers, the linebacker, takes it outside of the 25, up to the 26-yard line. So that was where Nebraska will start. Here's a big part of the story right here. Three turnovers, uh, two of them forced by Demario Williams that resulted in nine points for his football team. That was a big, big factor. Nebraska's running the ball well. And Utah State's throwing it well. One's doing it one way, one's doing it the other, and we get ourselves a battle. But Nebraska still, we talked about it at the top of the telecast, no balance offensively as David Horn is the single set. Short side of the field option. Lord's got room to roam, and he's got a first down across the 36, up near the 38-yard line. Back to the sideline. Noxie, what's the latest? Okay, Joel, just got through talking to Utah State. Coach Mike Dennehy said one thing. We got to find a way to block number seven. That's Demario Williams. He said we're going to double team in the second half and hope to wear him out late in the second half. We'll see what happens there, Joel. All right, Jim. I like what they did with the, the speed in the backfield where they had the running back stay there and chip away. Well, on the last sack that he had, they put a different offensive tackle in, burning him, and they slid the line. They tried to double team him, but his speed went up the field and beat both of them on the edge incredible right now they've got to be able to stop the option Lord straight ahead horn with speed and about he's up, he's up, he's up. five almost six for David Horn brought down in the secondary by Terrence Washington so that is going to be the dilemma 
for Utah State. Nebraska is not going to have to throw the football. It'll be a game of keep away, and that's what happened last week with Utah. They had the ball for 36 and a half minutes against the Aggies. Well, it's an eight-point game. I think the team that does the other thing well in the second half gets the upper hand. If Nebraska can somehow find a way to throw it effectively, if Utah State can somehow find a way to run it effectively and balance their respective offense, they get a leg up. They put it down at the 43, and it's second and five. Horn again. Just picking his way through and spinning close to a first down. He's short, though, by about a yard. One, one thing Nebraska will always do is that play we just saw. Power, pull the offside guard, and they go through the hole, fullback and guard, shoulder to shoulder, hammering people along the way. Horn was honorable mention all Big 12 last year. He was not a regular, but he still managed when he played nine games, 72 yards a game, a good average for David Horn. Well, he is the stutter step home run hitter. He can go to the house quickly. Stays in the eye. Man Lord calls his own number. He should have enough. Needed to go across the 48. He gets the spot just outside the 48 yard line for a Nebraska first down. And a lot of people forget this kid's 6'2, 220 plus pounds. That's a big body. You know, quarterback sneaks a good call when you have that kind of size to uh, push the line of scrimmage. I mean, he's built like a linebacker playing the quarterback position. He's long, too. Look at the long arms and long legs on Lord. Get some length to that body. So Nebraska with another first down, starting the drive back at their own 26. And wide Whoa. open, Harrion, but it hangs up. Did he get it anyway? He wow. made the grab inside the 15. Two were there. It didn't make any difference. Great concentration by Matt Harrion. There's the big play Barney Cotton's looking for, and Utah State wasn't fooled. They had double coverage, but playmakers make plays. Last year, he had seven catches, four of them were touchdowns. He averaged 43 yards a catch. Little play-action pass, let Herrien get down the field. He runs 4-5-5, double-team bracket coverage. He just makes the play. He's a bigger body, stronger guy for the jump ball. He makes the contested catch. I don't care if there's two guys there. I'm still going to catch this football. Herrien just... What a job catching the ball and concentration. It almost had the appearance at first that it's a mark off against Nebraska, but it almost had the appearance that number nine, Terrence Washington, spiked the ball into the chest of Matt Harrington. As he'll mark off five back to the 18. Now, Harrington, not the biggest tight end in the world, but what a receiving tight end. He's almost like a big receiver. It's almost like you can put Time him. Timeout Nebraska. That's their first charge timeout of the half. You got to believe if he's going to have a role in Sunday affairs down the road, he is going to be a big wide receiver. 6'5", 230. Jeans. Higher standards, Bank of America. And we look back a couple of years ago, a Heisman Trophy campaign for a great quarterback in Nebraska, Eric Crouch. And as a former Missouri Tiger, I think I've seen enough of this replay. <laughs> Eric Crouch, as elusive as ever, but we've got him to join us at the booth. Great play, great season, and now back in Nebraska. You know what? I, I love it here. And uh, I'm glad to be back and be a part of the Husker program again and get to watch some of these games I've missed over the past couple of years. Well, yeah, it's one of the great environments I have ever experienced in college football. You're also now in the business as David Horn takes it down for good yardage just outside of the 10, but you're also enjoying the television side of things. Yeah, I am a little bit here locally working for an ABC affiliate on Channel 7, and so uh, it's something where I'm just going to spend this season gaining some experience, and it'll be fun for me. I'll disregard the flag at the end of the play. And here, what about Channel 7? A studio anchor now yourself. Well, I mean, I'm I'm in doing some analysts. I guess let's just get this out of the way. Let's Perhaps listen to Eric Crouch. Win this game, right? Well, I think so, definitely. And the, the thing about winning the football game is I think they have to do what they did last week. Play you know, strong, strong defense. Good FaceTime, Crouch. Well, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Hard no. on to give up the middle, stacked up inside the tent. <laughs> So life after football yeah. is treating you well in Lincoln. Yeah, it is. It is. You know, I'm glad to be back. I love the people here in Nebraska. It's been fun. I had a great career, and and it's always nice to be at this atmosphere, like you guys said. What, what's it like? What's it like to be a living legend in Lincoln, Nebraska? Here, here you are winning the Heisman Trophy in 2001, and now you're living here in Lincoln. I mean, what? Do you have any opportunity to go out and enjoy things without being bothered every minute by people? 
Well, you know, obviously you got to find things that always aren't around people, but it, it's nice that people are the way they are here. Sure. It really is. They're down a little more than five. Wide side of the field for Lord. And near the first down. Let's see the spot he gets. He won't have it outside of the three, close to the four. Well, some incredible numbers here as Jamal Lord is trying to keep up with what Eric Crouch set as a standard for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Almost 8,000 total yards. You, you think of how great Tommy Frazier was. This guy blew him away by 2,500 yards. That's just phenomenal. And I, I was at that game, the Missouri game, Eric, when you made that run and literally went the length of the field. You, you avoided a safety in the end zone. You just, I thought it was your signature run for the Heisman Trophy. I was hoping you'd strike the Heisman pose at the end of it. And now guys <laughs> on fourth you. and a yard. Jamal Lord, as Nebraska tries to make a statement, he's right where he needed to go for the first down, a first and goal situation. They have to establish an attitude offensively, obviously, Eric. Oh, I, I couldn't agree more with you. It's one of those things where I think at the beginning of the year, the offense is always behind the defense. And so that's kind of how I've thought about it is that it's going to take two, three games for them to catch up to speed here and, and be the offense that they want to be. Of course, the, uh, the offensive line is a constant at Nebraska. It's a pipeline, really. And watch the big fellas, Root Hog, come off the line of scrimmage and reestablish it. You know, it's knocking people back. That's an incredible surge right there between the right guard and right tackle on a, on a goal line play to be able to just crease them and knock them backwards like that. And, Eric, what about the change in philosophy offensively with new coordinator Barney Cotton? He wants to throw the football a heck of a lot more. And Coach Frank Solich, you know, is the CEO of this whole operation. Sure. Do you think the personality of this team is going to change a lot? Well, I don't know about the personality. I can tell you that Nebraska has a standard around here. And, and the fact that uh, we've had a traditional team of running the power football game and going out and wearing teams down, that's what they're going to do. I don't think they're going to stray away from it too far. Obviously, Bar Barney Cotton has done a great job as coming in here as an offensive coordinator and changing things a little bit and trying to get the backs involved in the passing game a little bit more. Well, as you can see, they got the first down. It's first and goal. Horn stays in there. Anglin is way up the middle, and he's in. Touchdown, Nebraska. Now, don't forget, you got to be objective around here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, a, that's a tough thing for me to do. <laughs> really, really. Do you ever have the itches to go out there and run the option one more time? Yeah, one more time. That's it, though. One more time, and I'll do it. Once again, the offensive line, when you're in goal goal situations, you have to capture the line of scrimmage, and the Cornhuskers, big folks, Knocked the big folks of Utah State backwards, and Horn has an easy approach to the goal line. Great blocking. David Dykes, not Sandro DeAngelis, in for the point after. It's good. Eric, appreciate your time. Congratulations on a great career here and continued success on what obviously is going to be a good one for you here on television. Well, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate that. Eric Crouch, Heisman Trophy winner. Enjoying it now. A little breathing room. Welcome back once again to Lincoln, and it is warm. Not as bad as we had it last week in Austin, Texas in the 90s, but in the mid-80s, humidity at 43% at kickoff. Yeah, the Huskers a little more comfortable with a little more equipment on their sideline. And now, some breathing room, up by 15, as Dennis is back, along with Reggie Wilson. Man, Wilson can't handle it. Look out, now in deep trouble. Won't make it back to his own 10. First return. And give it to Jerome Dennis instead. As Chad Sievers was down there on coverage again. College Football Saturday on Fox Sportsnet is brought to you by Kia Sera, The new value frontier. Also by Dr. Pepper. BU, nothing's better, Dr. Pepper. Man by the Home Depot. You can do it. They can help. Classic setting, 257th career consecutive sellout. Here in Lincoln, go back to Bob Devaney. Goes all the way back to 1962. Jerome Dennis limping off the field after that kickoff return. And the worst field position to start a drive for the Aggies today, back outside their own seven. Nice change of direction for Fia Fia. His best run gets him up to the 14. Jim Knox. Okay, Joe, I tell you what, on the Nebraska touchdown drive, a heavy dose of David Horn. He came in for Josh Davis at that eye back position. Nothing fancy there. They just wanted an up, up tempo right there. And Josh Davis, they took him out of the game. He is fine. Now, David Horn said he is quicker this year, also gained 11 pounds because, you know why? He ate peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Every night before he went to bed, right there, guys. Oh, uh, yeah, PB&J, an all-time favorite. It was actually Chris Coolman. They told us they were going to line him up at tailback one time, and they did. 
So Cooley weaved his way for about six. And now Cox behind Chris Stallworth. It'll be third down, about four. Had to throw it behind because Fabian Washington was there. Tremendous coverage. So you throw it to the back shoulder and hope your receiver can react more quickly than the defensive back. But Fabian Washington blanketed the receiver on that particular play. So now field position working against Utah State. And that opening drive by Nebraska could have taken some of the starts out of the Aggies out of the locker room. Ten plays, 74 yards. And a touchdown run by David Horn. How are they going to block him? Demario Williams. And they keep him out of the backfield. Good idea. It's up for grabs. Deflected and almost intercepted. Should have been picked off by Lionel McPherson. The cornerback on that side. He's a junior from Omaha. You know what they did? Here's the look at this little uh, another formation, little bunch package, and they try to sort themselves out. Nebraska does an excellent job of, of finding out who's available. McPherson in excellent coverage there. How they blocked Williams that time is they put Cooley in the backfield. And Cooley, 252 pound guy, took on Demario Williams. I think we're going to see more of that. Cooley and Blitz pickup. Breaking the sideline, Hunt with, five, with more than 12 players. Five yard penalty, remains fourth down. Just what they needed. Utah State's trying to substitute some people, keep guys fresh in the second half. And they had extra guys in the huddle coming from the sideline on their punt team and, and trying to rotate players in, had too many, cost them five yards. Josh Davis should give them great field position. Chate did not afford another hook. He had a 17-yard punt in the first half. Here comes the heat. Low wobbler. Chate with Davis on the return, on the run. Altering it to the sideline. Look out. Chate gets it. The punter slowed him down, and he used the face mask. It's going to be a penalty. Tack on more yardage from the 15. What a return by Davis. And he waited and showed some patience on it. And there's a flag on the play. I don't know if they're going to call. Grabbing the face mask. What? Half the what? distance to the goal. The block. The block by Shanley is the thing that got the th got it started. Shanley right there had the chop block that got the play going. Josh Davis took advantage of it. And boy, that's a serious face mask. That's that's potential neck damage there when you drag him to the turf by the by the grill. So Davis, the all-time leader in kick returns. In Nebraska history with a nice punt return. So starting eye back, there have been so many great ones. When you're the starting eye back in Nebraska, that definitely carries some weight. Yep, no question about it. And what a tremendously conditioned athlete he is to be eye back, kickoff return guy, and punt return son. Davis in the eye on the sweep. Back on the play. Davis knocked out of bounds near the one. They now, was there a hold on the edge? Yeah, I think they may be calling Pete's the big tight end for holding on the perimeter, Joel. I think you're right. So now, John Bible, longtime Big 12 official. Holding on the offense, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot, repeat first down. Now you've got. Uh, you get Utah State just scuffling to stay in this football game with respect to field position, as you described, Joel. And, and they needed that. And Frank Solich not happy with the with the penalty. When you're in the red zone and you're inside the five-yard line, you don't want to be penalized back to the 15-yard line, particularly when your offense is struggling to find its identity and find a rhythm. Last week, Nebraska in the opener, the win over Oklahoma State had nine penalties, and eight came against the offense. Right, eight penalties for 70 yards, and a lot of them at inopportune times in the red zone. They're not first and goal. Back at the 15, though. Lord, with some deception, wide open in the flat. He's got his receiver. It's complete to Pilkington. The sophomore from Fort Collins, Colorado. And he's all the way to the five. Well, Lord shows he has plenty of arm strength. It's not a problem throwing the football. The problem with him is making the reads and having confidence in the reads that he's making. What about technique as well? Is he on his back foot when he releases? He throws on the run better than in the pocket. And Good call. Lord now 7 of 9. He's already exceeded his yardage from last week, 78. He's up to 79 yards passing. Josh Davis waiting for the block and doing all of it on his own. 
inside the four. We talked about Josh's dad, Tony. Yeah. Tony's always here. Tough Tony. Looks like he can still carry the pill a little bit. 19th on the Huskers' all-time rushing list, better than 2,000 yards. And you're right, he looks like I'm put pads you. on, he can hit somebody. I'm telling you what, this guy was one of the toughest football players uh, that, that I ever had the privilege of lining up with. And Tony uh, was a great short yardage goal line runner. Tremendous Dave. special teams player. And it's like a homecoming for you. It is. It's a reunion. Tony Davis, uh, Tom Rude, Barrett's dad, Rod Horn went in the Hall of Fame at D-line with us. Barney Cotton was a teammate in the offensive line. This is awesome coming back to Husker land. Now Lord on third and goal corner of the end zone. A little bit too much trying to go up top. He wanted Harrion, who is tall at 6'5", but that was too much. Yeah, and that's the kind of throw that Jamal Lord has to make. He had Har Harrion open and available. Harrion had seven catches last season. Here he is. And four of them were touchdowns, and he is wide open. You have to be able to deliver that ball accurately. And earlier, too. You're right, no question. Derek Shank was close closing on the ball, but it was late. And if he hits Harrion in stride, it's an easy six points. David Dykes, who's already got a 23-yard field goal. DeAngelo's missed an extra point of the first touchdown, and he hasn't been heard from since. Dykes, will it be two for two today? Yes. So another short field goal for David Dykes. And three. Perfect day in Lincoln. And now can the Aggies get it going offensively in the second half? Nebraska 25 to 7, our Microsoft trivia today. Since 1960, Nebraska's had 59 first team academic All Americans. Well, how many of those also? earned All-American honors. Now, is it going to be Dennis? How about nobody? It'll stay in the end zone for a touchback, a break for Utah State with the indecision back there, and they'll have it at their own 20. Well, the positive in the first half, the play of Chris Cooley. Mackey Award candidate. Chris Cooley, this, he found himself little soft spots in zone defenses, had five catches for almost 100 yards. He was the go-to guy, the check-down guy. Here he goes deep for the touchdown, right down the hash mark. Great adjustment to the football. 41-yard reception for a touchdown, never touched. He's showing athletic ability, flexibility. He's the total package, 6'2", or 6'4", 252 pounds, and can run. Well, now he looks for his first catch of the second half. From the 20-yard line for Utah State, and that's going to be a valuable timeout down the road if they make a game of it in the fourth. Well, we talked about the indecision just a moment ago on the return team. Now it comes with Travis Cox. You can't burn him that early in the second half. You're coming off the sideline for your first play of the half, and you have to call a timeout. Now we just saw our Microsoft trivia, and we've given you so much time to come up with the answer. Yeah. The true definition of student athlete, 13 of those 59 academic All-Americans also earned All-American honors on the field. So here's guys that, that learned how to budget their time on the football field and in the classroom. And there's some uh, tremendous names of those 13, can or 13 guys that accomplished. Trev Alberts, of course, uh, in doing a lot of communications work now. Dave Remington, two-time Outland winner and uh, Lombardi Vince? winner. Vince is in there. Yep, Vince. Throw it down. By the way, Dave Remington, teammate also with the Bengals. Just want to throw that in there, Joel. Yeah, they're coming to their feet for the black shirts here. 73 plus thousand strong. Little deception in the backfield for Cox. Downfield oh. and Cooley. He knew he was going to take a shot. He got it in the midsection. Hey, hey, and hey, check Trent, that. It was the other tight end. It wasn't cool to that time. Instead, Patrick McNutt. And Fabian Washington delivered the hit. Yeah. It's a little misdirection. Here comes a tight end across the middle, and he's open on the on the shallow cross and the delay. And Fabian Washington jackknifed him, hit him right in the middle of his body, and jackknifed him over the ball. That's uh, one where you can lose a little bit of breath. I was going to say, you go up at the sideline looking for air, if not for. Him. Did he crack my rib? <laughs> Second and ten. Second possession of the second half for the Aggies. The shovel pitch knocked down. Incomplete pass. Yeah. It is an incomplete pass. At yeah, least it exactly. should be called that way. The official, the referee's confused. It was, a, it was a shuttle pass, and it should be incomplete, and he finally ruled it that way. Yeah, some activity as well with a lost helmet for the Aggies. And the guy who is disruptive, as he was in the first half, Demario Williams, once again, 
He's the guy that is, is all over pressuring the play, making the, the shovel pass take place before the, it was time to do so. He got this, the deflection today. He's disruptive. I mean, he is a force. He is a penetrator and a disruptor at this spot. A lost third quarter so far for Utah State. Now, two of seven on third down tries. Cox is not going to get there. Guess who? Who else? Almost another sack. That would have been his fourth of the game. Cox barely got across the original line of scrimmage. Well, what what Utah State is trying to do, here's Williams. Who's going to block him? Cooley. Cooley is going to line up as a fullback. Cooley will, will protect, and he does a good job. He picks him up, but he's, he's doggedly determined. He's not going to stay blocked. He's going to separate and chase the quarterback down. He finishes plays. Cooley did a good job of consuming him, but you have to finish him because he's not going to quit. Now Jay to punt again to Josh Davis. Set him up in the first and goal on his last return. And nothing on that one as Cooley dives to get a touch on it. But still, Nebraska's going to have it inside Utah State territory. So the special team hurting the Aggies as well. Pre-game show, J.B., Howie, Terry, Jimmy, all coming your way tomorrow. It starts at noon Eastern before our Fox NFL doubleheader. We'll sit down with Bill Parcells, State of Affairs of the Cowboys, and what about the Rams? First game of the doubleheader against the Giants. Fox NFL Sunday, all at noon Eastern. As the Cowboys are part of the second half of the twin bill. Short field again for the Cornhuskers. They've got it at the 44 of Utah State. Oh Nothing doing that time. Aggies shut it down. Justin Jackson, the underneath tackle right on top of the situation. As, as strongly as Travis Cox started the football game, Joel with six straight completions. He's got six straight incompletions to start the second half. So as well as it went early for Utah State, it's going poorly to start the second half. And a big, big factor in that, number seven, Mario Williams with that pressure. Huskers up to the line in a hurry. No gain of the carry for Davis. Now Lord after the fake, looking back to throw to his tight end, Harry, and he's got a first down if he can maintain his footing. This is his turn, yet he goes down to the 38. Yep, got his feet too close together and got on the edge of his skis and, and wiped out. As he tried to slalom up the sideline, couldn't get there. Lord had a couple of guys open, nice misdirection, two guys available in the route, checked down to his tight end and got on the edge of his, uh, edge of his skis too much and down he went. I didn't know you were such a downhill racer. Yeah, I'm, I'm a slalom guy. And it, you, you saw the blacks come up out of, out of the turf. It's ground up rubber tires on this field turf, and that's what gives it the, the resiliency. Whenever you're on the slopes, I want to be on another mountain. <laughs> Big <laughs> hole. There goes Davis into the secondary. And touchdown saving tackle by Terrence Washington. Josh Davis has it first and 10 of the 18 for the Huskers. A quick hitter by Josh Davis. And when Josh Davis finds a hole, he accelerates through it as well as anybody in the country. And, and he just he just got off field and like a runaway runaway Bronco out there, taking it for every inch that it that was available to him. Davis now with 12 carries for 57 yards. He had 95 on 20 carries last week. That was a career high in both categories for Davis. Senior from Loveland, Colorado. Spinning his way for extra. Good job just to get it down to the 15-yard line. So third quarter domination by Nebraska. And it's almost like last week, Texas, New Mexico State, where you see the Big 12 team, in this case, Nebraska, starting to wear them down, that beef in the trenches. And, and it shows up in special teams too, Joel, because on the road, Utah State can't travel that many people. So a lot of their number one guys are covering kicks and covering punts. And in the second half, they wear down. And Nebraska has all these athletes available to them in the home games, and it just starts to become a mismatch in, in field position. 66, the traveling party for Utah State, as Dave mentioned. Nothing there for Josh Davis. Now it's a win for Utah State's defense if they can just hold him with Jake Stewart in on the stop, if they can hold him to three like they did in the last one in a short field. Yeah, that, that's the key. That's the key is, is they're going to have to bull their necks here and not allow Nebraska to, to pump it in the end zone. If they, they score and make it 32-7, it, it, it's real tough. If they hold it to a field goal, it's still a three-touchdown game. It's the second half of our doubleheader coming up next. Indiana in Seattle to take on the Huskies. Timeout in Nebraska, second charge timeout of the half. 
Well, while there's a timeout, Laurie talks to Frank Solich. It has been some time, Dave, since we've heard from Jim Knox, who I understand is over in the Husker Nation Pavilion. But is it really? has been some time. Really? Yes, there's Knox. There he is. There's Knoxy. Oh. oh, man. You know what? That's a nice way to cool off in this 90-degree uh, temperature. Look at Knoxy. You know, I'm glad Knox is in your car going to the airport in Omaha. Yeah, really. I'm going to get a couple of towels because I don't want my seat wet. Come on, Knoxy. Unbelievable. So Jim Knox is going to squish his way back to the sidelines. I'm telling you. How do you get the water out of your shoes that fast? It's unbelievable. But you know what? It's nice when it's 90. On that turf, too, the turf heats up to about 100. Knoxy said, that's enough. It's time to cool down. How about Herbie? One yeah, for but one. I, I was going to say, you know, I would have much rather had Eric Crouch over there yeah, throwing really, at him. Really? With no cage up surrounding Knox. <laughs> <laughs> See what kind of hands he has, huh? Fastball right down the middle. <laughs> now big third down for the Aggies defensively, trailing 25-7. to seven. Ah! Lord, what time. The deflection out of the reach of Harrington. Now what a job done by Utah State. The depth by the linebacker, Ryan Taylor. He got his paw up there. He did. He had a nice drop. Lord's got to learn to throw, put a little more air underneath it to get over the linebacker in front of the safety. And Lord throws a rope. And, and just if he could get a little bit more air under that football, and it, this is all things he has to learn. Touch, you know, when, when to put air under it, when to throw the, 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 uh, the fastball, when to throw the change up. And that's the process of, of learning how to play the quarterback position in terms of throwing it. And now it's going to be a 30-yard goal goal drive for David Dykes. He's good from 20 and 23. On its way, did he push it? No, he got it inside the upright. So what a debut for the true freshman. Big Spring, Texas. Took over for Sandro DeAngelis after the missed extra point. Pulled off of Dykes after uh, one week. And he's uh, taking advantage of his opportunity. Now the short field is Nebraska started with the ball at the Utah State 44. Stalled once they got it in the red zone. They've had to settle for three field goals that way today. Our Nissan scoring drive and Sykes converting on the field goal. Now can Cox get some offense going under the deflection. Oh. He tried to throw it through three. Barrett Rude got his hand up and knocked it airborne. And Bullocks was there on the deflection, but it's interesting because he made so many good decisions in the first half, and he had a man crossing underneath wide open. Well, what, what Nebraska is doing now, Joel, courtesy of Demario Williams, the pressure, they're getting pressure on the quarterback, rushing only four, dropping seven into coverage and changing coverages up on Cox. So they're confusing him a little bit, whereas the confusion in the first half rested with the black shirt defense. So Cox has missed seven straight. He's won for his last eight. Now, Fia Fia, waving his way, big yardage across the 30-35, just to keep him honest with a little bit of a delay on the run game. The reason that this play broke to the extent that it did, Nebraska came with a blitz. Watch the blitz, the blitz. And now when you crease that blitz, there's nobody there to make a tackle at the second level. Look at this. I mean, you talk about a hole, and it's all because of that blitz package, and they had the perfect call, the delay draw, and it was off to the races. First first down of the second half for Utah State. Believe it or not, it's not by way of the pass. It's on the ground with David Fia Fia. Now Cox out of the gun. Ooh. Man, they've tried that little screen, the bubble screen, you call it that alley screen. Right. Through the hands of Coleman. Well, yeah. And Joe Daly warming up, the true freshman in Jersey City, New Jersey. And we were told by Frank Solich yesterday that he wanted to get him in the second quarter if it wasn't too tight, because he didn't want to put pressure on Joe Daly. Right. Well, it was too tight. Yeah, if they had control of the game, actually, Barney Cotton was hoping to get him in about the fourth series of the game, but Utah State had it going in the first half. Joe Daly will make his debut now. Three down, Fia Fia, offside Nebraska. Can he get to the marker? And now an interesting decision. I don't think you have a choice. you got to make it second and five. Otherwise, it'd be third and a deuce at the 45. Carricker over there on the hit. Yeah, Carricker a little bit overzealous. You can't listen to the quarterback. Watch the football. When the ball moves as a defensive lineman, you move. Tune out everything else. A redshirt freshman, Kennewick, Washington, jumped off. 
and you come off the bench and you, you get some snaps coming and you're saying, ooh, I'm jacked up, and ooh, oh no, let me get back, too late. No can do there. Take the five and keep the down. Defense is offside. Penalty is declined. Interesting. Brings up third down. No third and almost two. I would have taken it second and five. Down meant more to me. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that decision. Let's see how this pans out. So here we go. Can they pick up about two? Oh. And it's put on the ground by Cox, and he won't get there. It worked out. <laughs> yeah, it worked out for Nebraska. Yeah. So one first down on the punt coming up for Utah State, unless they're big gamblers, and they're going to go for it at their own 45. And you're down 28 to 7. You're down by three touchdowns. Inside of four left in the third. They're not going to gamble. You know, it, this is the first time this has happened. And then when things go poorly, it's like the, uh, the old Morton Salt commercial. When it rains, it pours. And now for the first time, you have a center quarterback exchange problem. That's fatigue. They need a big punt from Ben Chait, a better one at least this time, as Davis is going to take it on an angle to the 12. And outside of the 20, he gives Nebraska the football at their own 23. So a long field for a change as Cooley was down there in on the hit. Now don't forget tonight and tomorrow, if you fantasize about football, this is your show. It's the Eltsman. So tonight and tomorrow, and you've got it tomorrow at 10.30, 7.30 out on the West Coast. It all comes your way on uh, Fox 4 Sports Net. Well, they finally get their wish here. This has been a big story in the papers all week long. Joe Daly. Will he get some time? Well, Joe Daly's in there, the true freshman, six even, 200 pounds, out of Jersey City, New Jersey. Strong arm. Obviously, he's got some wheels if he's in Nebraska. Straight ahead running. First carry for Corey Ross, a sophomore out of Denver. And Frank Solich told us yesterday he'd like to get Corey Ross some snaps. He's had a great camp this fall. Yeah, he's practiced exceptionally well. I thought might even see him as a return guy. I mean, he's, uh, he's built low the ground. Here's Barney Cotton again, the offensive coordinator. And he says at quarterback, he wants a thrower that is capable of running as opposed to a runner that's capable of throwing. And there is a big difference there. This is a thrower daily that is capable of running the football, and that's the style that he'd like at that position. Not a real tall guy, though, at six even. Delay, Ross spinning and then taking a shot. What a shot. Utah State's Mike Rosencrantz, the safety. He had him set up by a couple of his teammates on the line. But this is some plastic. Yeah, this is contact. Take a listen. That's a thumping right there. There's no question about that. You know, New Jersey has been very, very good to Nebraska. Yes. Mike Rozier, uh, you, you got playing the quarterback position, two guys out of Nebraska right now, Lord and now Daly, uh, both out of New Jersey. Third down for Daly and the offensive unit. Man, will Ross get there? No. They shut him down. So the kids are gone after three and out. Freshman quarterback, sophomore running back. Man, a punt coming up for the Huskers, up by 21. And Daly's looking at the sideline like, give me the play. I want to stay out in this football field. It's it's fourth and short. I can convert. Well, they didn't ask him to run the football at all. No, they got his feet wet by letting him reverse pivot and hand off. And there's Jamal Lord, the first one to greet Daly as he comes to the sideline. Mentor and student right there, both out of Jersey. How about that? This man has not been busy at all. Second team Big 12-er last year, Kyle Larson. One of his only punts of the day. He had one of the first half. Ooh, first to the second man. half. Gets his money's worth. Fia Fia on the boundary at the 15 to the 20. And out of bounds near the 24-yard line. So Utah State gets him back. Barrett Root down there. Larson with a boomer. Boy, nice job by Fia Fia realizing where he was on the field. Yeah, Demario Williams, not the big plays in the second half, but still, he's on top of the situation. And he's still disruptive. I mean, he's still in the backfield all the time. And watch him finish this play. You know, is he out of the play? No, Cooley thought he had him blocked. But you can never let up with a guy that got his, has his motor running 1,000 RPMs at all times, Williams. He had three sacks in the first half. Now, can Cox get the offense going? Underthrow. 
trying to get it to his wide receiver, Raymond Hicks. McPherson again on the coverage. So it's been a struggle for Travis Cox after a very successful first half. He has thrown for 147 yards. He's going to have to hit for what he did last week, 280, for his team to get back in it. He threw for 280 yards on 19 completions last Saturday. And, and you know what Demario Williams has done? Another thing, Joel, is because of his presence in the line of scrimmage, you don't see all the formations, the motion, the window dressing. They're coming out and lining up more and just running plays. And it's because of his, his influence. And now they're more confident defensively in making plays. Fia Fia, bending to the boundary. Oh. And we talked about Demario Williams' speed. He's as quick as a running back, and he showed it there. This guy, you know, he, he's not going to play defensive end, obviously, after college football. But look at him. Now he's lined up at the linebacker position. And watch him make reads and scrape over the top in, in pursuit of the football. Amazing angle. And when he hits you, you're down. Journey ends. Now, will he have enough speed at the next level to play safety in the NFL at 6'1", 215? You know what he is? He's a special teams demon. I put him on my 53-man roster and activate him during the, during the week to cover kickoffs and punts. He can get that done. So now, a huge third down. Final minute of the third quarter. Whoa. Here it comes, and there goes Cox. Out of the secondary, Hollowell with the blitz and the sack. Now Bo Pelini is saying, I'm coming after you now. We have our feet on the ground. We have our confidence. Now, now, now the kids are, are, are getting things done in terms of understanding what's expected out of this defensive football team in this end. That is the final snap of a very, very strong third quarter for Nebraska. Forgettable one for the Aggies and their fans, though, as Nebraska is starting to run away and hide. After three, out of the fourth quarter, our team mobile game summary, almost no offense whatsoever. So Dave Lappin, the adjustments made by Nebraska. Well, the key to this football game is Demario Williams getting him isolated and making plays, Joel. And he is the Nebraska's nomination for Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week. Seven tackles and three sacks. He has been the scorer. Chate, and we've mentioned him far too often for Aggie fans, the punter in the third quarter. Davis puts it on the ground. Can he get to the football? Yes, he I did. believe he covered it at the 44. Mm. That's a rarity. Right. So coming up next, out in the Pac-10, it'll be the Pacific Northwest as the Washington Huskies of the Pac-10, hosting the Big Ten's Indiana Hoosiers. Both teams coming off a loss. Washington, great deal expected, especially with their quarterback. And that is coming up next on Fox Sports Net, the second half of our Kia Sierra College Football Saturday doubleheader. Well, Joe Daly is going to stick around at quarterback once again for the Huskers, the true freshman out of New Jersey. He only had three snaps, and now they're asking him to do something with his arm. And a wide open, his wide receiver, Ross Pilkington. So a bullet to Pilkington on the move, and he showed the arm strength of the 43. Well, the thing about Daly, the coaching staff says he's got the strongest arm, the quickest release, and the most accurate thrower. Watch the release on this one. Little misdirection, fake. Stumbles coming out before the ball's gone, and it's gone quickly, and it's gone accurately, and the, and the crowd loves it. This kid can definitely chuck the rock. Well, if it's going to get to the point that we talked about it before, where they can't get balance in the attack from Jamal Lohr, they're going to have to look at Daly. From the 43, Daly on the edge, calling his own number, and almost weaved his way back into plenty of real estate that was available. He's chopped down to the 41 after a gain of two by Nate Frederick. It's interesting how Barney Cotton got him involved in his first uh, appearance at the college level. His first series did nothing but hand it off. Second series, he says, okay, your feet are wet now, Joe. Here we go. You're going to throw it. You're going to run it. You're going to be the guy. So he let him get his uh, the taste of it without putting pressure on him. But immediately, the next series, make some plays for him. Right. Well, field position has been the key for Nebraska. They've started with it on an average in Utah State territory. Yep. Now showing us the option with Daly. He'll call his own number, break a tackle, and get a first down into the secondary. Whoa. Daly down to the 18-yard line. He didn't quit. 
He let it slide by, showed some patience late, and Putnam finally caught up with him. Boy, for the second consecutive week, we're seeing nice debuts. Vince Young for Texas last week, showing an ability to throw it and an ability to run it. Daly this week for Nebraska coming off the bench. An ability to throw it, we saw. Now watch the ability to run. Make you miss. Make you miss. Try to finish. That's pretty good effort right there by Daly. He shows some nice acceleration. He's got the package. But I agree with Barney Cotton's assessment. He is a thrower that's able to run the football. He can really throw it well. But they're only six feet. You got to figure they're going to get him out of the pocket occasionally. So he has passing lanes, and you can see wide open. Pilkington again inside the ten, and close to another first down at the nine. It's the second time they've run this little misdirection, and then out of pocket as you described, Joel. Right at, right at you. Good, accurate football thrown. Pilkington makes the catch. They've only got a handful of plays for Daly. You know, they have the Daly package, the Daly double package, you know. And he, he comes in a quarterback, and he's going to execute, you know, like three runs, maybe three passes. Barney's going to call him over and over again and get him comfortable. So you want to be exact with the Daly double package. There you go. I like it. I like it. Now, 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 they, now they go two to three tight ends. They got the big, big folks motion in one. Boy, you, you're salivating over here. I'm telling you. Bouncing outside, Corey Ross, first and goal, Huskers at the six of the Aggies. You know, we showed the graphic, uh, Utah State with the short field. Nebraska's average drive start at the Utah State 45-yard line. Nine of the 13 drives this year against this defensive football team have been less than 50 yards that they've had to generate. I mean, so field position has been a big, big problem for head coach Mick Dennehy. And when you have field position problems against the Big 12 team, it can get ugly Yugi. And time of possession because of this stat, rushing yardage, has killed him as well. They've been on the field way too long. Stumbling his way on a first and goal is Ross near the five. Brought down by Papinga. Well, in just a couple of minutes, we're going to be joined by Hall of Fame coach Tom Osborne of Nebraska. Now a state representative will be with us in just a couple of minutes with Jim Knox. But I talked about the time of possession, and that's what killed Utah State yep. last week. They were on the field way too long. Well, last week, Nebraska had the ball 13 and a half minutes more than Oklahoma State, and they're doing it again. They're playing keep away. I mean, they're basically taking a quarter away from the opponent. They're saying, we're going to have four quarters to play. You can only have three. Daly on his second series. Short side option. Daly spinning and then really racked up. Coming over, Jake Stewart, the outside backer. So it's going to be third and goal inside the five. I'm uh, anxious to see Coach Tom Osborne, see how he's doing. Not only a Hall of Fame coach, but more importantly, a Hall of Fame person. Just a great, great man. And uh, just, you talk about a legend. I don't think legend's big enough uh, for to describe coach here in the state of Nebraska. I got a feeling he'll keep his distance, though, from Jim Knox, who just got out of the dunking booth. I bet you Knox, he, uh, I bet he's all dried up and looking clean. What do you think? Now, movement up front on the edge, and it was Harry in the tight end. It'll cost Nebraska five. Yeah, you don't want to make these brain cramps in the red snap. zone. Ball start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains third down. He's got a date later tonight. He wanted to get there in a hurry. Yeah, exactly. A roast is in the oven. He's in a hurry. He's in a hurry to get home to get it. You can't. You can't flinch. You can't start early. And once you do, look, look. Can't reset now. You can't move. You can't sneeze. You can't. Cut, you can't do anything. You get in that three. You got points. an itch. Itch it later. Yeah, exactly. You got to. You got to grin and bear it. Daily average almost a first down per lug. That dog will hunt. So here we go on third and goal as Daly has taken them from their own 44. It's at the Aggies' nine. Fade, corner of the end zone. Harry and Zare off his fingertips. Well thrown ball. Oh, you got that, Joel. Wow. Nicely thrown football there over the outside shoulder. The only guy that can make a play on the ball is Harry. And and this is Harry and flexed out. Now, you know, he's a tight end, but I can see him as a slot receiver as well. Makes it, runs a nice route. And all you have to do in college football, one foot in in possession of the football. He would have had the one foot in if he could have uh, sticky fingered the ball right off the finger. The left foot's in, if he could have caught it, it would have been a touchy down. 
So Dykes, busy guy today. He's looking for his fourth. They've all been chip shots. Yep. Not much more than an extra point from the 16 or 26 yard attempt. And it looks like a 50 yarder, doesn't it? Exactly. Perfect four for four. Welcome back to Lincoln, Nebraska. Fourth quarter is all Cornhuskers, 31 to 7. And a number of Husker fans logged on to foxsports.com. Keyword, ask Knox. They want to know, hey, what's former coach Tom Osborne up, what, up to? And right now, we should say Congressman Tom Osborne. You've been serving the people for the last three years. How's politics been going for you, coach? Well, it's been fine. I've enjoyed the challenge and uh, do a lot of traveling. I go back and forth every week. But it's been very interesting. It's been quite a change. Do you miss coaching? Yeah, I do. Uh, the first couple of years were really hard. As time has gone on, it's gotten a little bit better. Uh, some of the things I really miss are the players, the strategy, and I miss Saturday afternoons. Now, I know it's early, but what do you think of this year's Husker squad? Well, they played very well on defense today. You know, they gave up a couple drives early, but the, the last three quarters, they've shut them down. Offense is getting better, so I think we're going to have a good football team. Congressman, appreciate the time and uh, enjoy the rest of the game. So there you have it, Joe. We, we tracked Tom Osborne down. Next week we're in Ames, Iowa. Don't forget FoxSports.com, keyword Ask Knox, and we'll check out anything you want to do in Ames, Iowa. Joe? All right. Thanks, Knoxy. I think before too long they might be calling him Governor Osborne before too long. But do you believe Jim Knox just a couple of minutes ago in the dunking booth? And I'll tell you something, Derek Zoolander has nothing on him. And Knoxy <laughs> can make and Knoxie can make left turns. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly right. That blow dryer, man, he, 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 he wore that thing out. Drying him off, baby. Cox coming underneath. Stalwart can't hang on. In traffic. Tried to pull it in real quickly, and now it's going to be another third down. Chad Buller over on the coverage. I think we have to call that little uh, segment with uh, Jim Knox. You know, what do you want to know? Uh, Knox knowledge. You know, how, how do you get your Knox knowledge day? You, well, you log on. You ask your question, you get a little Knox of knowledge every weekend here. It's good to see Coach. He looks great. And uh, he's going to make a, an impact for the state of Nebraska in Washington, D.C. You watch. Now third and nine. Cox checking off at the line. Pocket holds up well. And he overthrows the world. Into double coverage. Closest one to it. Chris Stallworth. So double coverage, it's been a tough second half. In fact, Knox is only one for his last 12. Yeah, he, uh, he had 11 or nine straight incompletions. And I did say Knox, I meant Cox, but right. it's all yeah. running together with, you know, Knoxy all over the place. <laughs> exactly. Cooley has caught a bunch of passes. He's had his first two rushes of his college career. And Cox started out strong, but uh, and they got away from Cooley. He doesn't have a catch in the second half, Dave. Yeah, I, I think uh, Nebraska really, really made great adjustments at halftime. Time of possession now: 32 minutes for Nebraska, and only 17 for Utah State. Low line drive. Corey Ross is going to get the opportunity now, and good field position as Ross takes it, barely in his way to the 44-yard line. We'll come right back. You're watching Fox Sports Net. In this area, they do believe in the Lord, but they always say their daily prayers. And like today, that. their daily prayers have been answered. Joe got in for a couple of series. Let's see if he's going to be in for the third. But Jamal Lord, last year, better than 1,400 yards, third best. Labatt Blue, rushing numbers, third best among Division yeah. 1A quarterbacks. That's a pretty strong statement right there, but Daly is still at the helm. Joe Daly takes over at the 44. Corey Ross the single in a two tight end formation. And showing Whoa. the option. Now Daly in trouble. What can he manufacture as he tries to pick up blocks? And he gets a couple to the 50. Horse got her down, but not before he got a first down and showed his wheels to the 45 of Utah State. Well, this is athletic ability. You can't coach what Daly did here. Robert Watts, a great linebacker, free shot. Robert Watts can't bring him down. Daly spins away and he's off to the races. And he turns a negative play if Watts can tackle him in the backfield into a positive play in a first down. How do you defend athleticism and natural ability like that? That's why people say their daily prayers. 
Nice average. Four carries, 38 yards for Daly. Play fake, straight drop this time. Showing touch, first down at the 30. I like the way he led the man just out of the reach of the backer who was dropping Pilkings in another grab. And I love the way Pilkington always sells out for his quarterback. Not the least bit fearful of leaving his feet and going full extension. He landed hard, rubbing up that left hand, left wrist a little bit. This kid gives effort to catch the football. Set a freshman receiving record last year. Did a nice job, and he's picking right up where he left off in terms of number of catches. And boy, this could be a daily occurrence. Daily quarterback. Huh? There's going to be plenty of plays off of that one. Corey Ross. It's over, it's over. He takes it down inside the 27. So that three, almost four for Ross. Pulled down by Robert Watts. His defense has been on the field. It's unreal. The disparity in time of possession between these two teams since the second half has been so one-sided. Eight and a quarter to play, and all now you can hope for is everybody gets out healthy and the clock keeps moving. Well, that's the big thing. Last week when Vince Young came in, his team had a 45-7 lead. When Daly came in, the, ball, the game's in control. Defenses are worn down. They come in with fresh legs. Real evaluation is get them in earlier. Spread the defense a little bit this time with three wide receivers running to that side. The wide side of the field, Daly. Ooh. Pop out of the secondary coming up, Mike Rosengrantz. He had a good hit earlier in the game. Yeah, he's their best thumper in the secondary. And he didn't tackle well against Utah. The coaching staff is very disappointing pointed in his ability to finish plays, but he comes up and he puts a thumping on Daly here. Bank of America hires standard on that crack. Rosencrans, the senior from Kingman, Arizona. So now a third down for Daly in the offense. Need to take it inside the 20. A little more than three yards. Power formation. Corey Ross. He's got the first down. Helmet lost in the process. And a first down for the Huskers to the 18. Well, the Huskers find themselves in the red zone once again. The red zone early season stage has been the twilight zone. They've had to settle for field goals and haven't finished enough, enough red zone opportunities with touchdowns. And, and to beat teams like Penn State and Big 12 competition, you have to finish in the red zone. Nice finish of a run right there. And boy, off pops the helmet. You got to buckle that chin strap a little bit tighter because Utah State hadn't quit. Final seven minutes of play in Lincoln. Ross Whoa. on the option pitch gets a nice hop. He takes it straight to the sideline. He gets back to the original line. He tried to make something that wasn't there. Papinga in on the hit. The last year, and get back to some thoughts on the balance that Nebraska needs. Here's the option once again. Pitch a little bit high, a little bit tall. Not the tallest player on the football field as it sails over Corey Ross's head and take yourself right out of the red zone by fumbling the football. So the red zone continues to be the twilight zone. There's like, seems like there's an invisible fence in the red zone and the offense gets a slight correction, goes backwards. Loss of eight, back to the 27. So Daly out of the gun. Horn, the only one in the backfield of the play fake. Underneath is Pilkington. And he's back inside the original line, the 19 to the 17. But back to what we talked about at the very top of the show is Washington's in on the hit. Last year, 72% of Nebraska's offense came on the ground. Five seasons under Soldage, 70%. They, you got to go back, you got to go back to 76, Vince Ferragamo. Right. And, and they're trying to, trying to even it up a little bit. You know, I mean, Barney would like to have 35% of his offense come in that fashion. And that's the last time they had that much was Vince Ferragamo. The last right. time they had more than 35%. Today they've run the ball 59 times, thrown it only 17. I, I, he was looking for a little more balance than that, but 264 yards rushing. And it may come eventually as this young man gets into a rotation with Jamal Lewis. Although then defense is going to key on the pass a little bit more. Play fake on third down. Daly maneuvering his way. And barely tripped up. Short of the first down by six at the 15, and Dykes is going to have the opportunity for a five for five day. I think when you're starting to create a, an aura of throwing the football, you have to do it on the early downs. You have to throw the ball more on first down, whether it's play action or getting him out of pocket. And I think I think Barney will evolve to, to doing even more of that. He, he did it some. 
I think he'll even do it more against the likes of Penn State and try to be more unpredictable and make the defense defend the whole football field and all those kind of things. And now they're not going to take the chip shot field goal. Instead, they'll go for it on fourth and six. Need to get it inside the nine for the first and goal situation. What they're saying is if you're good enough to stop us, Utah State, you get it back. Daly trying to buy some time. Look at the maneuverability of Joe Daly. He hits it hard to believe. He's got a touchdown. He tripped up on his own near the five, but the way he eluded three guys in the backfield. Well, again, this is something that you can't coach. This is natural talent. I mean, he's breaking guys' ankles here left and right. One missed tackle, second missed tackle, third missed tackle, fourth missed tackle. Now he's up the football field. Oh, the turf monster gets him. Unbelievable. He can't, four bodies can't tackle him, but the turf does. Incredible. So he's an extra running back who's got a decent arm and a better arm, most likely, than Lord right now at this stage of his career. Timeout is taken. They are on their feet. College Football Saturday on Fox Sportsnet is brought to you by Kia Serra, the new value frontier. Also by Dr. Pepper, BU, nothing's better, it's Dr. Pepper. By Nissan and your local Nissan dealer. And by Bank of America, higher standards. First and goal for Joe Daly and the second team offense for the most part. Now, in there running back, Corey Ross pulling his way, and I believe he's in. No, they don't put their hands up. It looked like the football got to the goal line. Ross denied by inches, second and goal. Josh Sewell right there, the center for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, and Huskers having a great day, and here he gets a nice block at the point of attack. Lead blocking up front. Does now if Ross's body crosses the plane, that's not a touchdown. Does the football? I think it I does. I thought it, the left arm was the. No I question. Thought it went over. When he got swung around, that football crossed the plane of the goal line. But Sewell, a transfer from Indiana State, walking on a Nebraska starting center. Fifth year senior Robin Miller, Joe Daly tried to put it on Snake. Lost and the ball. now he lost the ball, and it's covered in the end zone. Touchback. Yes, covered in the end zone by Robert Watts. I think he tried to extend the ball, Daly did, and, and lost control of it. You have to have ball security. And once again, the red zone presents problems for Nebraska. Watch Daly as he, as he, as he tries to lunge. The ball comes out of there. You have, to, you have to protect the football, and it's definitely turf bound. Covered by Utah State. Turnover in the red zone, that's in the, the end zone. That's <laughs> the most positive development in the second half for Utah State. Let's head back to the studio at Dr. Pepper game break and rejoin Mike Goldberg. Mike. Now from the 20-yard line, Cox oh. and almost into the hands of the lineman. Before the snap occurred, there was a false start of the offense. Five yards, remains first down. No Look play. Bongo right. No Thought, play. Look what I found. Well, Chris Cooley with our Kia Sarah Mita play of the game, and what a grab. Great adjustment to the football. You know, had to turn completely the ball was thrown over the opposite shoulder that he anticipated made the adjustment caught it took it to the house excellent play now breaking out is Sophia Thea the senior from West Valley City Utah now just trying to keep the clock moving and out of the 24-yard line with a little more than three minutes to play. So McDenny's squad give them credit. The first half, they hung tough with one of the most physical teams in the Big 12. Second half, though, Barney Cotton's group down in the trenches just beat them up. Yeah, they did. They established control of the line of scrimmage. He said many times he wants to be the most physical offensive line and therefore the most physical team in the Big 12. That's one of his goals. 408 yards offensively to 178. Good grab. And right at the first down is Coleman. Jim Knox, what's going on? Hey, Joe, right after that fumble, Joe Daly came to the sidelines. Frank Solich asked him, hey, what happened? He said, a busted play. He said, I didn't get the signal in time. So that's what happened. He's blaming that on a busted signal. Well, you know, that was a problem in the first game. 
uh, for the first time in a while. Nebraska used to messenger plays in with players. Now it's all hand signals from the sideline, and there's still growing pains there, particularly with a young quarterback. Quarterback sneak. Cox has the first down. Drive is still alive out to the 32 for the Aggies. Order me a little pepperoni on my pizza. Get it delivered to the booth, huh? What do you think? Daly is definitely. You can hear what he said. He said somebody was walking between the men sending the signals. So he decided to just try to make the best of it on his own and go up and over, but he forgot the football. You know, you look at the, look, he's looking at his wrist. He's got plays and formations on his wrist, and they're going through the checklist. You know, with this formation, here's the play. That's the daily package on that left wrist. Time for Cox and a wide open receiver. Hold up, guys, hold up, hold up. He's got a first down with Coleman. Kenny Coleman, the senior from Palo Alto. That'll move it to the 42 of Nebraska. So Nebraska now not rushing as many and very soft in the secondary. You know, the Nebraska has generated over 400 yards offense, like you said, Joel, but they're still having red zone problems. They have to finish drives in the red zone with touchdowns because Penn State, in, in competition in the Big 12, that's going to be a huge factor. You can't settle for field goals or no scores when you get in the red zone. You've got to finish. Mike Goldberg, Kellen Winslow, Billy Ray Smith all coming up with the postgame report at the conclusion of our matchup. Fia Fia on the carry. And the clock rolls down to about 90 seconds left. So what a perfect day if you're a Nebraska Cornhusker fan. Some anxious moments in the first half. But then they made some great adjustments. Let's face it, at halftime, the coaching staff got together, and Utah State did not move the football at all in the second half. Well, what they had to do is find a way to block Demario Williams, and they had to put Cooley in the backfield to do it. That took him away as a receiving option. He had to turn into a blocker. Deep drop for Cox. Trouble. Kabongo got it. And from the outside, actually, in on the hit, Stuart Bradley. Yeah, they got a lot of guys backup uh, defensive and offensive players in the game now to finish this up and once again though still same schemes Bo Pelini wants everybody attacking was there any doubt who our player of the game was going to be today the difference maker I mean Demario Williams nobody could pass block him. they tried to double team him there with the running back his speed get up the football field two forced fumbles on two consecutive snaps here they double team with Lyman he runs by both of them I mean he was he had a a star on his chest, and then he was S on his chest. They needed kryptonite. That was the only way not to, you know, handle Superman today. He tied the school record for sacks by a linebacker. Leroy Atn did it, the last one to do it, against Oklahoma back in '88. And he got three sacks in a half. Three well, sacks. Three, in he got three sacks in about six minutes. Yeah, he had him. <laughs> he had him on back-to-back -back snaps, and, and forced fumbles. He had, he had two sacks. Two forced fumbles and a fumble recovery in two plays. Now that's pretty productive. I mean, that's unbelievable. He was the leading tackler on the team last year. He's a senior from Beckville, Texas, which is not far from Tyler, Texas, northeastern part of the Lone Star State. There is the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week. I'd be pressed to think who had a bigger outcome on the football game in any game than this guy had in his. Well, last week we had the Special Teams Player of the Week, Selvin Young. For right, Texas, right. and I agree with you, defensively, he should be the defensive player of the week. Now third and long, out of the timeout, Cox on a quarterback draw. Needs a block, got it, he's got a first down to the 30 of the Huskers. Looking ahead for the Cornhuskers, and we talked about the balance they need because some of the difficult road games that they're going to be looking at, they're at Missouri at Texas, and they finish up with their arch rival for the division, Colorado. Right, and even, you know, Kansas State comes uh, comes knocking here. Texas A&M, you know, they're going to have to get things done in the red zone. I think that's the biggest thing they have to get accomplished offensively is balance their offense and score points when provided opportunities. Don't settle for less than touchdowns. Cox trying to get into the end zone. The final minute of play on a jump ball. Collinsworth has it knocked away. Good play downfield by Terrell Butler. And I'd like to tip my cap to Mr. Cox. You know, he uh, started off with six straight completions, and, and he took a beating today. He's going to be in the jacuzzi. You know, he took some thumps, and he just hit twice, hit by the player and then hit by the turf when he went down. And he stayed in the pocket, and he kept throwing and chucking the different guys. He involved a lot of players distributing the football.
right tackle was moving around again. You know, you can't you can't be getting out of a two point and moving backwards. On the offense. Five yard penalty, second down. That's the second time that's happened. One time Utah State called a timeout and they weren't penalized. This time, no timeout, penalty. You can't move backwards simulating the start of a play. So it's back to the 35-yard line with 38 seconds left. All Nebraska in the second half, a dominating second half. They put a lot of heat on Travis Cox. As you said, though, he is going to be sore tomorrow. Fia Fia weaving his way. And will they get another snap off in time as Chad Buller, the linebacker, came up to make the play? No sense of urgency for the Aggies, and I don't blame them. So Mick Dennehy and his squad, three straight games on the road to start the season. First time since 91 they've done that, and that'll do it. They have had enough. So they showed well, there's no doubt. They were in on 15 to seven, everybody. Let's not forget at halftime. They almost played dead even with Nebraska for 30 minutes of play. There's going to be a dead ball foul because the play clock expired. They had their first lead of the season, Joel, 7-6 to six against Nebraska. That was their first lead of the year. Coach uh, Denny, he said, I want to run one more snap. Well, oh, call the timeout with a second to play. And he's going Lock, to kick a field, for goal. field goal. Right. Opportunity. So Hamlin, the freshman from Clearfield, Utah, hit one last week, a 21-yarder. This is going to be a 47-yard attempt, though. Nebraska blocked one last week against Oklahoma State, and they had one of theirs blocked. And Ooh. that'll do it. Little Sums hooks. up the second half for the Aggies. It is over in Lincoln. And our final score for the Huskers, 31, Utah State 7. Remind you, our first and ten today provided by Princeton Video Image Incorporated. So the Oscars control the game and the line of scrimmage, outgaining the Aggies 405 yards to 238. They got it going, and maybe the biggest pick me up for the Oscars and their fans the play of Joe Daly in the second half. I know Coach Solich is going to have something to say about that. Let's head to Jim Knox. All right, thank you, Joel. Coach, I tell you what, after a sluggish first half, you guys really. Poured it on the second half, the offense over 400 yards of total. Oh, are you pleased? Well, you know, there's still some rough spots, an awful lot of rough spots that got to be ironed out. But, but you know, we've given a very good team effort now for, for two games. I am really pleased about that. But we could execute better on the offensive side of it. I thought our defense took a little bit of time to get adjusted to what they were doing. But once they, they did, they caught up to things pretty quick. How about the black shirts? Demario Williams was in the backfield the yeah, entire day. Uh, Demario now has had two great games. He is a great, great player. Uh, Great speed and, and just great instinctiveness. And so we're really pleased at the kind of start that DeMario's had. Coach, appreciate the time. Congratulations Thank on the you. win. Joe? All right, a 24 point win for the Huskers. For Dave Lapp, Jim Knox, I'm Joel Myers. That'll do it from Lincoln, but stick around. Let's head back to the studio with Mike Goldberg, Kelly Winslow, and Billy Ray Smith. <laughs>